enough of this. If you're looking for a better path to success, consider the U.S. Army. The Army offers skills and challenges which can help you prepare for a whole lifetime of success. The Army also offers more than $71,000 for college if you qualify, or up to $65,000 to repay qualified student loans. Enlist today and you could also be eligible for enlistment bonuses of up to $40,000. For the location of your local Army recruiter, call 1-800-USA-ARMY. Paid for by the U.S. Army. GoArmy.com. Tonight on Techno Quiz, we put the Todd family's tech knowledge to the test. Todd's ready? Ready! Name four reasons Comcast Cream Satellite TV. Oh, state-of-the-art fiber optic technology. Local and cable high-definition channels. On demand. Shows you play any time. And no long-term contracts to sign. Tectacular, Todd's. Now, why is Comcast America's number one high-speed internet service? Downloads up to seven times faster than DSL. Free Rhapsody Radio and Video Mail. Free McAfee Security Downloads. And free online gaming. That's true, Commander Broadband. Last question. What makes Comcast Digital Voice the best home phone service? One low price for everything. Like unlimited nationwide long distance. Anonymous call blocking. And checking your voicemail online. The Todd's win. And you can too. Call 1-800-COMCAST to get one tech connection to your home. Certain restrictions apply. Some services not available at all. Gladstone High School Choir with tonight's national anthem here at PGE Park. Let's get into the starting lineup brought to you by Portland General Electric, delivering safe, reliable power to your home and to the home of the Portland Beavers. For Sacramento, Kevin Malillo leads it off. He's the second baseman, batting second, playing shortstop, J.J. Fermaniak. But on Boca Chico will hit third. He's the designated hitter. Batting cleanup, playing third base tonight, Derek Barton. Kurt Suzuki will bat fifth and catch, followed by first baseman Jason Stokes and left fielder Brian Stavisky. Antonio Perez will bat eighth and play right. Batting night, the center fielder Charles Thomas on the mound, Jason Windsor. For the Beavers, Craig Stansberry leads it off. He'll play third, batting second, playing shortstop, my pregame guest, Oscar Robles. Paul McAnulty will hit third and play right, batting clean at the D.H. Jack Cust. Batting fifth, the left fielder Royce Huffman. Vincent Sinisi will hit sixth and play center. Batting seventh and catching Luke Carlin. Brian Myro, just off the DL, will make his Beavers debut tonight. Bat eighth and play first. Batting night, the second baseman, Luis Cruz, on the mound, right under Jack Castle. Today's insurance quote of the day is with Beavers pitching coach Gary Lance, and I talked to him about Jack Castle. Jack, uh, you know, the thing about Jack is he has to uh, keep his emotions under control. He's a very, very emotional guy. He's a very intelligent guy. Uh, he's very dedicated. Uh, he wants to do well so badly that uh, he sometimes is his own worst enemy. He, uh, he, uh, st he struggles to keep uh, his adrenaline down, and when he, kno he knows that when he doesn't keep it down that it's the worst thing that he can do, and he overthrows, he opens early, the ball gets up in the zone, it uh, loses its late movement, and uh, then he starts getting, giving up line drives and fly balls instead of the ground balls that is a hallmark of his uh, abilities and when he's really hitting on all eight cylinders. He'll go to work against Kevin Melillo, a left-hand hitter. First pitch of our game brought to you by Fred Meyer. What's on your list today? You'll find it at Fred Meyer. Melillo hitting 265, no home runs, five runs batted in. Castle winds and delivers, and it's a fastball over the outside corner, 0-1. Late umpires Mike Malinsky, the first base umpire Joe Stegner, third base umpire Will Robinson. The 0-1 to Melillo, fastball low, 1-1. One and one. J.J. Fermaniak on deck, and then Haram Boca Chica. If anyone gets aboard, Derek Barton. The 0-1 from Castle, and it's foul back. In fact, now 1-2. and two. Scoreboard says 0-2. and two. It is 1-2. and two. Sacramento's a little banged up. Remember yesterday, Jeremy Brown chasing a pass ball came up lame. Indeed, it was a calf injury. Man, he's on the DL. 
one-two pitch, slider inside, two balls and two strikes. Lou Merloni's on the DL, retroactive to two days ago. He has a bruise on his head from spring training when he was hit by a ball. Fastball low, a full count to Melillo. Castle making his fourth start. He's a sinker slider pitcher. Gets a lot of ground balls. 3-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off to the left. And it's still a full count. Jason Stokes is in the lineup for Sacramento tonight. Although he's suffering from flu symptoms. Ram Boca Chica not feeling that well. He's in the lineup tonight. That's the DH. And the pitch swung on. Pulled on the ground. Through the hole. Right side. Base hit for Malillo to start matters off here in the first. McAnulty bobbles it momentarily. Now gets it in. And the leadoff man aboard. Melillo has stolen four bases in four attempts. J.J. Fermaniak comes up. Fermaniak leads the league in steals with eight. He swiped eight out of ten. He's at the hitter. He's at the plate right now. Melillo leads it first. Myro holds him on, and the pitch. J.J. takes a strike over the outside corner. 0-1. For Maniac and Castle, longtime teammates in the Padres system. Castle checks in with his battery mate, Carlin. Melillo takes his lead. Pickoff throw to first, and Melillo dives back in. Rich Burke here at PGE Park. Mike Shacker, my studio coordinator. Oscar Robles at short. Luis Cruz at second. They flip-flop the typical alignment there. Melillo leads. Castle delivers on 0-1. Sinker inside for Maniac. One ball, one strike. The idea is that they will move Cruz and Robles and Stansberry around the infield among second, third, and short and give them all a chance to develop at all three positions. Castle checks Melillo and the pitch to Fermaniac. Fast ball outside corner one and two. J.J. hitting 256, a home run, four runs batted in. Top of the first inning here at PGE Park. Beautiful night. 317 down the left field line. 405 to straightaway center. 320 down the right field line. 1-2 pitch. Fastball low, 2-2. Two and two. Crowd called for it, but it did look low. Short porch here is in left and left center. Told you 317 down the left field line. 375 to left center. It's 385 to right center. Two balls and two strikes to Fermaniak. Melillo leads. The pitch to J.J. The runner goes chopper towards short. Picked up by Robles. He throws it across in time, and there's one down. They stay out of the double play by sending Melillo. And he's at second as Haram Bocachica comes up. Bocachica hitting 283, couple of home runs, nine runs batted in. Yesterday, Bocachica was 0 for 5, hit the ball hard once, lining out to third. Right hand hitter, he's a veteran, 31 years old. Castle ready, a look back, and the pitch to Bocachica. Slider waved at and missed, and he was fooled badly on that one. Jack Castle, meanwhile, 26. It'll be 27 in August. 6'2", 190 pounds. Making his fourth start. You hear him on weekends here. He's the co-host of Beaver's Roundtable. Our Saturday and Sunday Toyota pregame shows. A look back, pick off fake the second. Melillo got back in. They thought he might be making a break for third with one down. And the second baseman, Cruz, came in behind him. But Melillo read it well. He takes his lead at second. The outfield shading Boca Chica to pull. He's got a close stance, a right-hand hitter against the right-hander Castle. Jack ready and delivers on 0-1, and it's taken inside. One ball, one strike. Derek Barton on deck. Artificial turf playing surface. 18th Avenue out beyond left, left center, and center field. The 1-1 pitch plucked out of the dirt, down in the way by Luke Carlin, 2-1. and one. Playing field is 30 feet below the surface of the street, and the max tracks now be on left field. 
People can walk by, look down, and take in the game. Castle looks back in the 2-1 pitch, and it's taken inside by Boca Chica. Didn't miss by much. 3-1 the count. Huffman in left. In center field is Sinisi, and around in right, Paul McAnulty. Each playing in that spot for the first time this year. The 3-1 pitch, and it's a change for a strike. Full count. Good changeup by Castle. That is decidedly not what Boca Chica was expecting on 3-1. and one. Now to count full. Max Train passing out beyond center field. Boca Chica waits. Castle looks back at Melillo at second. The 3-2 changeup swung out. He just got a piece of it and chopped it foul at home plate. And it's still 3-2. and Back-to-back -back changes from Castle. And now see if he comes back with a fastball, which will look markedly faster after the back-to-back -back straight changes. No big league time yet for Castle. Boca Chica, meanwhile, made his major league debut back in 2000 with the Dodgers. Also been in the big leagues with the Tigers, the Mariners, and the A's. He asked for time and backs out. 239 career big league games for Haram Boca Chica. 218 batting average with 13 home runs in the bigs. Castle checks Malillo at second, and time asked for by Boca Chica and called by the plate umpire Mike Malinsky. Boca Chica, 290 career minor league hitter. Climbs back into the right-hand batter's box. Stands a pretty good distance from home plate. Close stance. Carlin sets up outside corner. The 3-2 pitch. Fastball foul back. He was right on that one. And it's still 3-2. and two. Derek Barton on deck. And his last start in the first inning, Castle ran into problems when he thought he had a hitter struck out to end the inning. It was ruled ball three, and then there was a walk and back-to-back -back RBI singles, and Castle <laughs> left the first inning trailing 2 nothing, and he went just four frames. The 3-2 pitch swung on, foul back again by Boca Chica. That rattles around in the lower level of the sweeps off to our right, and it's still a full count. Three and two on Boca Chica. This will be the ninth pitch of the at-bat coming up. Castle looks back. Another look back at Mulillo. Cruz coming in behind him. Pickoff throw, and they just missed getting him. They almost had him. Good timing play by Castle and Cruz. And Mulillo dive back in. Sinisi in center is shading Boca Chica to pull. McAnulty and right a little bit toward the line. And the pitch swung on a top toward second. Two hops to Luis Cruz. He gloves it, throws to first in time. And there are two down. Derek Barton comes up. Barton yesterday was three for five with two run scoring doubles, including one in the first inning. Beavers are six and nine this year. And the opponent has scored first in 13 of their 15 games. Castle trying to keep the slate clean here in the top of the first inning. Runner at third, two down. From a stretch, he eyes Melillo at third, and Barton takes one in there on the inside corner at the knees, 0-1. Derek Barton, 21 years old, and many consider him one of the top hitting prospects in the game. Castle checks Melillo, and the 0-1 pitch change in the dirt one and one when he was drafted Billy Bean called him at that point the best pure hitter in the minor leagues that was actually when the A's acquired him in a trade from St. Louis that Bean said that they got him in the Mark Mulder deal Martin waits left hand hitter open stance deep in the box Stands off home plate. Carlin sets up inside corner. The fastball misses inside. It's two and one. Kurt Suzuki on deck. They've made Castle throw a lot of pitches in this inning. There's a chopper toward the right side. Moving to his left is Cruz. He falls down. Throws to first to Castle. Not in time. And the run is home. Well, let's see. Myro did get back to the bag. I thought he might not have gotten back over there. 
He got back and Cruz stumbled and they lose a chance to get Barton at first and the run is home. That'll be an error on Luis Cruz as he falls down. So it's an unearned run. Barton at first. Barton has attempted one steal this year. He was thrown out. And the pitch taken down and away by the right-hand hitting Kurt Suzuki, 1-0. Cruz, who's used to playing shortstop, playing second base for the first time. And his foot came out from underneath him as he went to make the throw. Then Barton hustling all the way, beat it. There's a ground ball through the whole right side base hit. The second goes Barton. Suzuki aboard, two on, two out. Jason Stokes, the first baseman, coming up. So an error on Cruz has led to an unearned run, and what Castle's job is to limit the damage. One nothing River Cats. We're in the top half of the first inning. Barton at second, Suzuki at first, Stokes comes up. In fact, it's Stavisky who's batting in this spot. Donnie Murphy is on deck. Stokes, apparently, the flu-like symptoms got him, and he couldn't make the bell, couldn't answer the bell and had to come out of the lineup. So Donnie Murphy, who has been out with a slight hamstring pull, is on deck. Stavisky moves up from the seven to the six slot. And the pitch, Stavisky takes a strike. It's two and one. Two and one the count. Two on, two out. One nothing River Cats. Castle delivers. Davisky takes a sinker outside. And it's three and one. Donnie Murphy is on deck. Barton at second, Suzuki at first. Castle checks him and deals on 3-1. And there's a ground ball toward Cruz. He has it. Backhand flip to Robles, and the inning is over. Oscar had to reach to his left to get it. An unearned run because of the Cruz error. And we go to the bottom half of the first. Sacramento won, and the Bieber is coming up. You know, new tires and wheels can be hard to buy because you never know how they're going to look on your ride. Well, that's not a problem anymore thanks to Les Schwab's virtual wheels. You can check it out either online at lesschwab.com or at any of their local tire centers. Here, you can check out your car with all the combinations they have to offer. No more guessing, and now's the time to take advantage during Les Schwab's spring tire sale, which ends on April 30th. So either go online or stop in at a tire center near you and match up your ride with all the different tire and wheel options. Les Schwab, they'll get you rolling in Friend, a major opportunity in the biggest gold bull market in history does not come along every day, but it has come along today. Gold prices have more than doubled in the past five years. Not bad, but experts say this is just the warm-up phase. Commodity bull markets average 15 to 23 years, and most investors have barely noticed gold yet. But soon, the public will rediscover why gold is this century's best investment, just as I, Pat Boone, have told you. To get up to speed on gold fast, call Swiss America for their new magazine, The Future of Gold 2007. It'll help you find the best gold values available today. For your free Future of Gold magazine and CD, call 800-289-2646. That's 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Again, 800-289-2646, 800-BUY-COIN. Find out why gold's future is so bright, and it can be yours, too. Bottom of the first inning, it's one to nothing River Cats. They pick up an unearned run because of the air on Luis Cruz. And here in the bottom of the first, 
Jason Windsor will go to work against Craig Stansberry, Oscar Robles, and Paul McAnulty. Portland Beavers baseball presented by Portland General Electric. On the Miller Lite Major League scoreboard, the Yankees led the Red Sox 6-2, to two, going to the bottom of the eighth inning. In the bottom of the eighth for Boston, Ortiz doubled, Ramirez walked, and out later Mike Lowell singled to bring a run home. Mariano Rivera came in to try to get a five-out save. Jason Veritek singled, another run scored. Coco Chris tripled home two, and Alice Cora singled to bring home the go-ahead run. And the Red Sox lead the Yankees seven to six in the top of the ninth, but A-Rod is at the plate. Craig Stansberry takes a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Stansberry hitting 370, one home run, six doubles, right-hand hitter against the right-hander Jason Windsor. Windsor's got great stuff, fastball, curveball, slider, and change. The righty delivers, and it's a cutter taken outside, and one and one to Stansberry. Craig hit his first home run last night, a ninth-inning shot that tied the game. The 1-1 one, one pitch is on its way to Stansberry, and it's a fly ball toward right, going back as Antonio Perez, a step onto the track, two steps now, and brings it in. Stansberry gave it a ride. He flies out to right to Antonio Perez. Oscar Robles comes up. My pregame guest hitting 298, no home runs, three runs batted in. Three left-hand hitters in a row here. Robles, McAnulty, and Cust. Windsor working from the first base side of the rubber. He's a big boy, 6'2", 235. Fastball outside, ball one. He doesn't overpower you, but he does command the ball very well. Changes speeds well. He does throw hard enough to get in on your hands. Even hitters on the opposite side of the plate. The 1-0 pitch. Man, it's a change on the inside corner to Robles, 1-1. One and one. One zip River Cats here in the bottom of the first inning. The outfield shallow on Robles, a left-hand hitter. And the pitch to Oscar. Changeup taken high, two and one. Paul McAnulty on deck. Beautiful night for baseball here in the Rose City. Team comes home a week from Monday to play Salt Lake. An eight-game homestand. The first four with Salt Lake. Two-one pitch, fastball high. Three and one to Oscar Robles. Jason Windsor, one win, one loss. 3.980 ERA. Right ender turns and delivers on 3-1, and Robles swings and lashes it foul. Pass manager Rick Renteria down the third baseline. Three and two the count. Tomorrow we'll be in Colorado Springs. Toyota pregame show at 3.40. Game time, 4.05 Pacific. Three and two on Robles. Windsor winds and delivers. And Oscar swings and grounds one past the mound. The shortstop for Maniac can't get it. Robles has himself a base hit. One on, one out for Paul McAnulty. Robles is not a real base stealer. Very rarely will he go. McAnulty yesterday, his Beavers debut started the year with San Diego. He'll probably be back up there before long. McAnulty 0 for 5 yesterday with a run scoring ground out. Mac was 1 for 8 in the big leagues. And he got lost in the shuffle when the Padres needed extra bullpen help because of all the extra inning games they've been playing without a day off. Powerful left-hand hitter. He takes a fastball over the outside corner, 0-1. Jason Windsor, a right-hander, 24 years old. He'll be 25 on July the 16th. Short lead at first for Robles. 
Windsor kicks and delivers, and McEnulty lines one down the left field line. It's a fair ball heading down toward the Beaver bullpen. Robles hits second under full steam. Here he comes to third, and the throw comes in. A double for McEnulty. Robles to third, second and third, one down. There's Mack's first hit with the Beavs this year. An opposite field double. Vintage Paul McEnulty right there. A pure hitter indeed. Jack Cuss comes up, the Beaver DH, 294, four home runs, five doubles. Yesterday, Cust was one for three, a couple of walks, and he has hit in eight straight. Last year, his high was nine straight. Second and third, the pitch to Cust, fastball outside, ball one. Windsor will work out of a stretch. Robles at third. McAnulty at second. 1-0 the count on Cust. Windsor checks the runners, delivers. Change up high on a wave. 2-0 to Cust. Royce Huffman on deck. Beavers send six men to the plate from the left side against Windsor. Switch hitter Luke Carlin. And then the left-hand hitters, Robles, McAnulty, and Cust. Sinisi. And the newcomer, Brian Myro. 2-0 the count on Cust. He can look for a pitch to drive right here. It's on its way. A change on the inside half. Heck of a pitch by Windsor right there. Now 2-1. Second and third, one down here in the bottom of the first. Beavers trail 1-0. Windsor delivers to Cust, and Jack swings through a high fastball, two and two. It's over at Fenway. The Red Sox scored five runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. In the top of the ninth, with one out, Bobby Abreu walked. Alex Rodriguez came up and lined out to second. He did two home runs earlier. And then Hideki Okajima got the last out. The 2-2 pitch coming up to Cust. Changeup swung on and chopped foul at home plate. Still 2-2. Two two. Windsor has an excellent fastball changeup combination. The big guy, 6'2", 235 pounds. Jack Cust, 6'1". Big boy himself at 230. Robles at third, McAnulty at second. Beavis trying to get some runs for Jack Castle. The shift is on. The second baseman, Melillo, is out in shallow right. The right field of Perez is almost over into the right field corner. The shortstop for Maniac is where the second baseman plays. The third baseman, Murphy, is where the shortstop plays. Cost fouls it off to the left, and the count remains two and two. Jason Stokes was expected to be in the starting lineup, but because of the flu, he was unable to go. Donnie Murphy has been battling a hamstring injury, playing third base tonight. Derek Barton was expected to play third. He's playing first, his customary position. Right now, the third baseman, Murphy, is playing over at short, which is the position he's used to anyway. Two and two the count on Cust. The shift is on. They have the entire infield rotated around. And the pitch to Jack. Changeup swung on and missed. And down he goes. Two away for Royce Huffman. Huffman struggling a bit, just 192 on the homestand. Five hits and 26 at bats. Big spot here. With runners at second and third, two down. Righty to righty, Windsor delivers, and Huffman swings and fouls it off. Like a curveball from Windsor, 0-1. Vincent Sinisi is on deck. Good pitching by Windsor. He fell behind Cust, 2-0. 
and threw him a changeup, which Cuss took for a strike. A fastball, Cuss fouled it off. Another changeup fouled off. Another fastball fouled off. And a changeup swung on a miss for strike three. The 0-1 pitch, Huffman takes one low. One ball, one strike. Thomas in center, playing Huffman of the opposite field. Stavisky in left. He's basically straight away. Windsor from a stretch. Second and third, two down. The 1-1 pitch. Huffman takes a strike of the knees. And it's one and two. Huffman backs out to think about things. Now climbs back in. Jason Windsor, just a fourth-year pro, a third-rounder back in 2004 by the A's. Now he's set. The 24-year-old right-hander delivers on 1-2, and Huffman takes a breaking ball on the dirt, smothered by Suzuki. And it's two balls and two strikes. Both catchers tonight, Suzuki and Carlin, are expert at blocking balls in the dirt. Craig Colbert, who was a major league catcher and the Beavers' manager the last three years, until he was promoted to bench coach for the parent Padres this year. Last year, Colbert said that Luke Carlin is the best catcher he's ever had at blocking balls in the dirt. And Kurt Suzuki, the River Cats catcher, does a fine job himself. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. One nothing River Cats. We're in the bottom of the first. Windsor delivers on 2-2, two, two, and it's outside ball three. Full count to Huffman. This will be Windsor's 24th pitch here in the first inning. Jack Castle had to throw a lot of pitches in the top of the inning. Huffman waits. Robles down the line at third. McAnulty from second. And the 3-2 pitch swung on pole toward third. A foul ball. Threw him a 3-2 change. He'd struck Cust out on a 3-2 change. A 2-2 change, in fact. Still 3-2 on Royce Huffman. Windsor's fastball really didn't top out much higher than 90 miles an hour. And occasionally he'll throw a curveball or a slider, which looks more like a cutter, but primarily fastball and change. The 3-2 to Huffman, and Roy swings and lines one down the right field line, slicing, and it's foul. Drops untouched, still 3-2. and two. Like he threw him a cutter there. Still a full count. One nothing Rivercats, bottom of the first inning. Huffman two for six this year with two outs and runners in scoring position. Right hand hitter open stance against the right hander Windsor. And the payoff pitch, and Huffman takes strike three called over the inside corner. He thought it was ball four. Beaver strand runners at second and third. We go to the second. One zip. River Cats. Does your list of home improvements include remodeling your kitchen or bath, or even adding on a room or two? Then call Integrity Construction Concepts. They have years of experience with residential and commercial remodeling, including additions, kitchens, bathrooms, siding, windows, electrical, and complete planning and design. For your next project, call 709-9843. Integrity Construction Concepts. For affordable service without compromising quality. Experience the difference of integrity. I'm a PGE power line, a power line gone bad. It wasn't my fault. Just 20 minutes ago, I was a proud, productive member of society. I kept your lights on, your milk cold, your clock ticking. I was a pillar of the community. But then the storm hit, ripped me from my pole, and now I've changed. Heck, I don't even know who I am anymore. I could be live and loaded with 230,000 volts of lethal power, or as harmless as a kid's jump rope. The worst part is, you just can't tell by looking. So my advice, stay as far from me as possible and report me to Portland General Electric. Dispatcher Kerry Kennedy will have a repair team out here in no time. I swear, the future's bright. I'll soon be the power line I used to be. Until then, steer clear. I'm trouble waiting to happen. Hi, I'm Kerry.
Jerry Kennedy. Please report all down lines to Portland General Electric at 503-464-7777. PGE, we do this every day. Baseball presented by Portland General Electric. It's 1-0 River Cats going to the top half of the second inning. And Jack Castle will work against the bottom third of the batting order. Donnie Murphy, Antonio Perez, and Charles Thomas. Moving to the top of the second inning, leading off for the River Cats, third baseman, number seven, Donnie Murphy. Murphy hitting 333. Parts of the last two years with the Kansas City Royals. Man, he has been out with a slightly pulled hamstring. Hadn't been on the DL just day to day. Right-hand hitter, the right-hander Castle delivers a fastball fouled off up onto the roof. And the count nothing and one. This is the kind of weather that we hope for. This is just a great night for baseball here. 60 degrees at game time. Castle wearing the long sleeves. Into his wine and the 0-1 pitch to Murphy. And Donnie takes one inside, one and one. Castle needed 33 pitches to get out of the first inning. Jason Windsor, he needed close to 30 himself. Pitch fouled off to the right. One and two to Donnie Murphy. Windsor needed 26 pitches to get out of the first inning. One, two pitch, slider swung on and fouled back. Man, the count's still one and two to Murphy. Murphy parts of the last two years with the Kansas City Royals. In fact, it was 04 and 05. He had seven games with the Royals in 2004, 32 in 05. It just 163 in the big league. Slider pulled on the ground towards short. Oscar Robles gobbles it up, straightens up, flips it across in time. And there's one down here in the River Cats second. Antonio Perez comes up. Perez hitting 143, but one of those hits, his only home run, was a big one. It came in the 10th inning yesterday, and it led to the 6-5 River Cats win. Sinesian center moves over to play Perez to the opposite field. Huffman in left straight away, pretty deep, and a pitch knocks Perez down, up and in. He ends up in the dirt in the right-hand batter's box on his backside. Want to know the count? Crowd oohs and ahs. We talked about it a lot on this homestand. A lot of the times that pitch is by design. Next pitch, fastball outside corner. One and one. Beavers manager Rick Renneria says it's not enough to come inside. If you come inside down around the knees, that doesn't really back the hitter up. 1-1 one, one pitch, fastball fouled down the right field line, back and out of play, 1-2. and two. If you're going to come inside, you got to come up and in. So that makes the hitter think. It makes him back out. And then it opens up that outside corner. The 1-2 pitch is on the way, slider outside. Another thing a pitcher has to be able to do is throw a fastball or hard slider on the inside corner. I'm not talking about, in this case, off the plate. I mean on the plate. The 2-2 pitch from Castle, and it's a slider fouled off again by Perez, and still 2-2. Two and two. There's an old axiom in baseball. A pitcher has to get the hitter concerned inside in order to get him out outside. You get him concerned with the inside corner, and then you own that outside corner. Collins sets up over the middle, and the pitch, change up, waved at and missed, and down he goes. Good change by Castle. First strikeout for Castle. There are two down for the center fielder, Charles Thomas. The run for the Cats in the first was unearned because of an error on Luis Cruz. Castle comes in with an ERA above eight. And he just flat out needs outs. He needs scoreless innings. Thomas, a left-hand hitter in Castle's pitch. Failing fastball outside, ball one. Castle pitched last year for the Beavers and then went down to double A. Didn't pitch so well here. And double A was outstanding. Fastball for a strike outside corner. Then he went to the Arizona Fall League and pitched well there. Pitched well in the Puerto Rican Winter League. Castle's 1-1 delivery. And Thomas takes inside of his belt 2-1. A 
comes back on 2-1. There's a change over the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. Castle's fastball will top out about 90 miles an hour, typically 87 to 89. 2-2 two, two pitch, change up, chopper toward the right side. Myro backhanded, throws to Castle, covering, and Castle can't catch the ball. It rolls over into the Rivercats dugout, and Thomas will go down to second base. Jack, in an effort to tow the bag, couldn't catch the ball. The inning should be over, but his own error is going to cost him. There was a good throw by Myro. Castle is not a good fielding pitcher. Kevin Melillo comes out. There were a couple of times last year and the year before in key spots where Castle's own defense got the better of him. And I know that's something he's worked on. Jack comes set. to look back at second at Thomas. They end the pitch to Melillo. It's a change inside ball one. So now Castle has to collect himself and get out of the inning unscathed. Jack checks in with battery mate Luke Carlin. Now comes set, looks back. And the 1 0 pitch. Fastball at the knees for a strike. It's 1 and 1. A couple of starts ago, Castle made a nice play, knocking down a one hopper and getting it out at first. The 1 1 pitch on its way. There's a ground ball toward the right side. Luis Cruz has it. And he throws to Myro. The inning is over. Brian Myro, the new Beaver first baseman, just off the disabled list. The air on Castle doesn't hurt him. The Cats strand a runner at second. They left three in two innings. We go to the bottom of the second. One nothing Sacramento. Are your neighbors calling your spa the Black Lagoon? Your spa is an investment and deserves the care of a specialist. Your spa deserves the spa doctor. From pump, heater, and underground leak repairs to chemicals, parts, and supplies with free delivery, we do it all. The Spa Doctor. Find us in the yellow pages or see us online at thespadoctor.com. Isn't it time to turn your black lagoon into a blue oasis? The Spa Doctor. We can fix anything. I looked at her and I was just, wow, she looked great. I told her I couldn't believe how smooth her face looks. She's lost, what, 10 years at least? I looked at her and it's like I'm looking at a picture of my wife from 20 years ago. It's incredible. How are ordinary women across America looking years younger? They've discovered the clinically proven breakthrough called hydroxetone. It erases wrinkles, tightens skin, and makes frown lines disappear from view. See for yourself by requesting a free trial of hydroxetone today. The results are so impressive. Hydroxetone was given away in the VIP gift bag at this year's Sundance Film Festival. And now you can experience them for yourself. Try Hydroxetone risk-free and shed years from your appearance faster than you thought possible. She always looked good to me, but now I can't believe how young she looks. Turn back the clock with the free trial of Hydroxetone. For your free trial, call 1-800-581-7622. That's 1-800-581-7622. 1-800-581-7622. to nothing Sacramento and for the Beavers they will send to the plate Vincent Sinisi Luke Carlin and Brian Myro Jason Windsor needed 26 pitches to get out of the first inning he struck out Cust and Huffman to end it and the Beavers left too they had second and third with one down but couldn't get anybody home now here's Vincent Sinisi, 283, a couple of home runs. And eight runs batted in. Windsor's pitch taken high and away. Ball one. Windsor and Sinisi each played in the College World Series back in 2003, as did Greg Stansberry. The 1 0 pitch, man, it's taken in there for a strike. One and one. Matter of fact, Windsor and Kurt Suzuki were battery mates in Omaha back in 2004 and 2003. Suzuki and Windsor battery mates here in Sacramento. 
The 1-1 one, one pitch is on the way. Changeup waved at a miss. An easy way out in front of it. Final game of the homestand for the Beavers here at PGE Park. They played last week in Sacramento and won the first game of that series before losing the last three. They won the first game of this series but have dropped the next two. Tonight being the finale. Trying to avoid the same fate they had down in Sacktown. 1-2 pitch. Fastball strike three called over the outside corner. Down he goes. Third strikeout for Jason Windsor. Sinisi thought the pitch was outside. He has not moved out of the left-hand batter's box. Third impound Mike Malinsky coming up. He heard it in the last inning from Royce Huffman. Not too much. Huffman just stood around home plate for a long time after the inning was over. Wasn't very vehement. Neither was Sinisi, but they each let their gripe be known. Luke Carlin comes up. Switch hitter batting left-handed. 241. No home runs. One run batted in. The center fielder Thomas shades into the opposite field. Up there from the left side against the right hander Windsor. And the pitch. Fastball sails away. Ball one. Rich Burke here at PGE Park. Mike Shacker back in the KK80 studios. Running around from room to room. Getting highlights of this game. Highlights of big league games. He'll be on tap after the third inning with a major league update. 1-0 pitch. And it's in there at the knees for a strike to Carlin. 1-1. One one. On deck is Brian Myro. One one pitch. Carlin takes a change inside two and one. One nothing Sacramento bottom half of the second. The two one pitch on its way taken low. Missed with a slider three balls and one strike. Series opener tomorrow in Colorado Springs. Our airtime will be 340 Pacific. The 3-1 pitch to Carlin, and Luke swings and fouls it off to the left. Ryan Ketchner will go for the Beavers. Right under Bobby Keppel will go for Colorado Springs. The Sky Sox are the Rockies AAA affiliates. Windsor into his wine, his 3-2 pitch, changeup is outside, ball four. First walk given up by Windsor. That brings up Brian Myro for his first at-bat as a Beaver. Myro has been on the DL since the end of spring training with a calf injury. A couple of years ago, we saw him in Las Vegas. He had 282. 22 home runs there and 73 runs batted in. Myro climbs in. Ninth year pro, left hand hitter. Windsor delivers and Myro takes one at the knees. It's 0 1. Last year he played in the Korean Professional League. Then signed with the Red Sox organization on August 5th and went to Portland, Maine, where he played double A ball. The 0 1 pitch, a swing and a pop up off third, coming over is Donnie Murphy looking up and he makes a one hand grab and there are two down. Myro fouls out in his first at bat as a B. Myro is a career 298 hitter in the minor leagues. Just a little bit of big league time two years ago with the Dodgers, 19 games. And he will be a good stick in this Beavers lineup. Two down for the second baseman, Luis Cruz. Just six for 51, hitting 118. Matt, a couple of good at bats yesterday. The pitch to Luis, and he takes one inside, ball one. Yesterday, Cruz was 0 for 4 with a walk. He drew a 10-pitch walk in the thick of that four-run seventh inning. The pitch to Luis. 
And it's taken outside 2-0. And, oh. and then in the 10th inning, he got a hold of one, drive to center. But the center field of Boca Chica was playing deep. And he was able to make the catch. If he pulled it just a little bit, it would have been up the alley. The 2-0 pitch to Cruz. He swings and lofts it over short. That's heading toward the alley. It'll get out there. Thomas can get it. Carlin digs for third. He's around third, held there by Renteria as Thomas gets it in to J.J. Fermania. Second and third, two down. A double for Luis Cruz. Cruz points at the heavens, heaves a sigh of relief as if to say, thank you, and I needed that. Beavers think Cruz is going to hit. And he doubles here. Craig Stansberry comes up, second and third, two down. Beavers left runners at second and third in the first inning. They had him there with one out. Now two down here. Windsor from a stretch. And the pitch to Stansberry. Curveball drops low, ball one. Started them off with the deuce. Had a fan ask me, what do you mean when you say deuce? Well, it's the signals from the catcher. One for a fastball, two for a curve, generally speaking. Call in the third. Cruz at second. Change up for a strike. One and one to Stansberry. Flew out to right field his first time up. Winds are set, and the 1-1 one, one pitch down and away, missed with a slider, 2-1. and one. Oscar Robles on deck. 1-0 Sacramento, we're in the bottom of the second. Long, thin crowd, a uh, cloud going across center field, looks like a contrail from an airplane. Change up pulled foul by Stansberry, 2-2. Two Multnomah Athletic Club rising high above right field. It's about 12 stories high. Very nice on the inside. And the Mac Club is somewhat stale looking on the outside. Everything else about this ballpark is it's pretty to look at. The ivy growing on the left field wall. The 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball pulled on the ground toward the hole. Diving try by Murphy. He can't get it. One run scores. Here comes Cruz. Here comes Tavisky's throw. He scores. In the second on the throw goes Stansberry. Two to one Beavers here in the bottom of the second. over through the cutoff man that allowed Stansberry to get down to second Oscar Robles comes up Stansberry picks up his team leading 13th and 14th runs batted in 2-1 Bevos wins are ready delivers to Robles change up Oscar drives it toward the gap in right center Thomas on the run reaches up can't get it all the way to the fence Stansberry scores Robles around second he'll dig for third here comes the relay from Malone Play at third is not in time. It hits Robles in the back. 3-1 Beavers on a triple by Oscar Robles. All with two outs. Pitching coach Rick Rodriguez going out to the hill. They'll chat with Jason Windsor and Kurt Suzuki. As in the first inning, they were playing Robles shallow and hit the opposite field. And when he got into it, Charles Thomas had a long run. He very nearly made a spectacular backhand grab. He had robbed Robles of an extra base hit in Sacramento. That was... 11 days ago when he backhanded one running into the corner. He almost got one from him here. Paul McEnany 
Mills. He comes up. He doubled down the left field line. His first debut. 3-1 Beavers here in the bottom of the second. Windsor from his belt heaves a sigh. Fires plateward. Outside. 1-0. For the first time, I got the idea Windsor was trying to overthrow on that one. One ball, no strikes. Jack Cust is on deck. The 1-0 pitch, and it swung on and hammered into the right field. Coming in, Perez, and makes the catch. That ball was hit hard. Might be the hardest hit ball of the inning. But Perez was able to flag it. Beavers leave Robles at third. He tripled home one after Stansbury singled home two with a two-out hit. We go to the top of the third, 3-1 Portland. Uh, my name's Joe. And this is my wife, Virginia, and uh, we're, we're the, the butts. butts, yeah. We live here at Cannon Beach in Oregon. Third log uh, on the left. We don't normally do radio ads. Or talk. Right. But we want everyone to know there are people who don't want us here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they call us discarded. Trash. They call us trash. I, I don't even know what to say to that one. You know, it's gotten so bad that last year saw, you know, the, the people who clean up trash all over Oregon. NPGE. Yeah, and their partner, PGE. Well, they came in and hauled off 10,000 of a cigarette butts. Not even an apology. No, nothing. And the frustrating thing is... It, it ruined it, the it, summer potluck. Yeah, well, all right. Now, that's not what I was going to say, but you're absolutely right. It's just wrong. This is Jack McGowan with Solve. For 15 years, we partnered with Portland General Electric and their volunteers to make Oregon a cleaner place. To join us, visit portlandgeneral.com. Are you thinking about remodeling your home, adding a bay window, skylights, updating your bathroom, or maybe even adding some square footage? Whatever your idea is, All Pro Contracting can make it happen. We specialize in gutters, repairs, remodels, restorations, additions, kitchens, bathrooms, drywall, painting, and more. In fact, just bring us your to-do list and we'll get it done. All Pro Contracting. Find us in your yellow pages or see us at allprocontracting.org. Portland Beavers Baseball Club. Any rebroadcast or reproduction without the express written consent of the Portland Beavers is strictly prohibited. Beavers Baseball brought to you in part by Supercuts, where you're guaranteed a good-looking haircut every time. 3-1 to Beavers as we go to the top half of the third inning. J.J. Fermaniac will lead it off against his former teammate, Jack Castle. Righty to righty, Castle delivers. Slider waved at and missed. 0-1-1 oh to Fermaniac. But I'm Boca Chica on deck. The 0-1 pitch, fastball at the knees. It's nothing in two. Maniac and Castle were teammates in their first year of Pro Bowl, 2000 in Idaho Falls. The 0-2 pitch, swung on and missed, blew a fastball by him. It was dropped by Carlin, he picked it up and tagged for Maniac out. And there's one away for the D.H. Haram Boca Chica, grounded the second, his first time up. Sacramento got an unearned run in the first inning. He was stranded runners at second and third in the bottom of the first. They had second and third, two down in the bottom of the second. Craig Stansberry singled through the hole on the left side to bring them both home. And then he went down to second on the throw to the plate and scored on Oscar Robles' triple. But on Boca Chica, takes a slider down in the way, ball one. Joseph Buren Castle. Brother Justin playing in the White Sox chain. He was a seventh rounder last year by the Sox out of University of California, Irvine. Breaking ball outside, 2-0. His other brother, Matt, was a backup quarterback at USC and now is a backup quarterback for the New England Patriots. Line drive into center base hit. A broken bat line drive. The meet end ends up out near at the shortstop position. Boca Chica singles on a 2-0 pitch. Derek Barton comes up. Castle's game is ground ball outs, and when he's on, he gets a lot of them. And that's the first hit there was a line drive the other two were ground ball hits although they were both hard hit Malillo and Suzuki back in the first Boca Chica leads 
And the pitch to Barton fouled off to the left 0-1. Barton reached base on Luis Cruz here in the first inning. Cruz ranging wide to his left, and then as he tried to plan, playing second base for the first time this year, his foot came out from underneath him. Barton singled and walked against Castle when they squared off 10 days ago in Sacramento. The pitch to Barton, change up high. And it's one and one. Church Suzuki is on deck. Boca Chica runs well. Stole 18 bases last year. There's a drive to the gap in left center field. Going back on the ball as Huffman reaches out, can't get it. One hop, it hits the fence. Around third being waved home is Boca Chica. Here comes the relay from Robles. The play at the plate is not in time. A double for Barton. Three to two, Sacramento, uh, the Beavers. Sacramento back within a run. Huffman came close to running that down, but couldn't do it. Derek Barton continues to hit well in this series. Yesterday, he was three for five with a couple of doubles and a couple of runs batted in. He doubles home a run here. Kurt Suzuki comes up, single to right his first time up. 3-2 Beavers. We were in the top half of the third inning. Castle checks in with Carlin. Now he comes set. Jack looks back at Barton at second and the pitch. Suzuki takes a fastball for a strike over the outside corner, 0-1. Outfield shading Suzuki to the opposite field. There's a lot of room down the left field line. Castle's 0-1 pitch slider, chopper hit foul. One hop to Tony D. Tony D. Francesco, the Cats manager. Back-to-back -back PCL titles for Tony D's Cats in 2003 and 2004. Sacramento's been in the PCL since 2000, and the only year they didn't win their division was 02 and 06. 0-2 to Suzuki. Carlin sets up over the middle, and the off-speed pitch taken down and away, 1-2. Barton at second. He's the tying run. We're in the top of the third inning. One out. One and two. The count on Suzuki. Right hand hitter. Carlin sets up off the outside corner. Pick off. Throw to second. Castle throws the ball into center field. Barton didn't see it. I don't know why he isn't leaving second base. Did Cruz beak him out as if he'd caught it? And now Barton holds his hands out, palms upward, and points his eyes as if to say, I didn't see it. How in the world did he not go to third base? Castle made a pickoff throw and missed second base by 10 feet. I guess it was far enough behind Luis Cruz that he just stood there, and he didn't scramble after it, so Barton didn't know that it had gotten by. One, two, pitch, slider, a half swing, around he went, says the plate umpire Mike Malinsky, and down he goes. Third strikeout for Jack Castle. Two down for Brian Stavisky. Castle hadn't walked anybody. The run in the first he gave up was unearned. He gave up a run here in the third. Big at bat here facing Brian Stavisky. Grounded into a 4-6 force play. His first time up. Three to two Beavers. We're on the top of the third. Tying run at second with two down. Castle delivers to Stavisky. Fastball well placed over the outside corner. 0 and 1. Another good crowd out here at PGE Park. Crowds will build as the season goes along. Castle's 0 1 pitch. Stavisky takes inside a slider. Plucked out of the dirt by Carly. Fired behind the runner to Robles. And sliding into third is Barton. Goes to third on what's going to go on the books as a fielder's choice. Carlin had him hung up. Instead of running at him, he fired to Robles. And Barton immediately broke for third, and he made it over there.
They're going to give Barton a stolen base on that one. He had broken and then stopped and then continue to third so he gets a stolen base. One and one the count. Stavisky, big left-hand hitter. He digs in. And Castle's 1-1 one, one pitch. Slider swung on and missed one and two. Stavisky, 6'3", 230 pounds. Fooled by Castle Slider. Barton at third with two down. He's a tying run here in the third inning. Castle has Stavisky by the neck. See if they go back to the slider again to put him away here. Garland puts down the sign. He sets up over the inner half and the pitch. Slider pulled toward first. Myro fields it in fair ground. Underhand to Castle covering. He's on the bag and the inning is over. Two hits, a run. A runner stranded at third. The Cats have left four. Three of the four in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the third inning. 3-2 Portland. Hey, fans, is your house paint cracking more than the bats at the ballpark? Then call 6A's Painting. We're proud to serve Beaver fans throughout the area with the finest in painting and decorating. At 6A's Painting, we specialize in interior and exterior, residential and commercial repaints, and are a proud member of the Better Business Bureau. So call today. You'll find 6A's Painting in the yellow pages. 6A's Painting. Our work is quality. We guarantee it. Thanks for helping me move, Liz. Sure. Time for that California Chardonnay we love. Ooh, Corbett Canyon? Canyon, Canyon, Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> but we're never going to find a corkscrew. Oh, don't need one. Got the Corbett Canyon Premium Wine Cap. Clever. Keeps the air out, flavor in. Just turn the tap for a glass of crisp, refreshing Chardonnay. Mm. And get this. After it's opened, keeps wine fresh for six weeks. That a woman invented it. Why is that? Clever, practical, don't need a tool to open it. <laughs> Good taste is worth repeating. The Premium Wine Cask from Corbett Canyon. Canyon. Corby Canyon Vineyard, San Luis Obispo, California. Music of Your Life at Sea returns for 2007 on the luxurious MSC Cruises Opera with Buddy Morrow and the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. Sail from Fort Lauderdale on your choice of four great dates. All your music of Your Life at Sea friends will be there. Laurie, I'd like to teach the world to sing Hafer, Michelle Anastasio, the Music of Your Life Quartet, and, of course, musical MC and New York City Morning Mayor Herb Oscar Anderson. For free details, call toll-free 866-878-4606, 866-878-4606. Music of Your Life at Sea, 186. Six six eight seven eight four six zero six. Jack Cust leads off the fourth inning for the third inning for Portland. He'll be followed by Royce Hoffman and then Vincent Sinishi, middle third of the batting order here in the bottom of the third inning. And it's 3-2 Portland. Just struck out swinging on a change his first time up. Jason Windsor, 48 pitchers through two innings. Jack Castle, 68 through three. Just left-hand hitter, slightly open stance. Windsor's pitch taken outside, ball one. Jason Windsor was the most outstanding player at the College World Series in 04 when the Cal State Fullerton Titans won it all. Kurt Suzuki, his battery made there, is his battery made here with the Cats. Pitch taken low, 2-0. Castle, a cost is hit in eight straight. Struck out his first time up tonight. Came in hitting 294 with four home runs. Jack swings, and it's a high fly ball into deep left center. Thomas on the run. Thomas looking up. It's gone. Cust hits his fifth home run on the homestand. He's hit in nine straight. Beavers four, Sacramento two. Huffman comes up. Struck out looking his first A.B. And that's when the Beavers stranded runners at second and third in the first. Four-two Beavers here in the bottom half of the third. Windsor's pitch. Curveball low, ball one. 
Windsor throws over the top. 6'2", 235 pounds. Yeah, it's a big boy out there on the hill. Windsor looks over his glove now. Rocks and delivers to the plate a fastball outside. Two balls, no strikes. Stavisky in left, Thomas in center, Perez in right. On the infield, Barton and Melillo for Maniac and Murphy. Suzuki back of the plate. Windsor on the hill. And the 2-0 pitch. It swung on and a line past Windsor up the middle base hit. Huffman turns at first. He'll get back in the back. And Vincent Sinisi comes up. Ten days ago, Windsor had the Beavers tied in knots. Seven and two-thirds innings, five hits, one run. Today, the Beavers have four runs on now eight hits. Runner at first, nobody out. Huffman hasn't attempted a steal. Short lead to first, held on by Barton. For Maniac and Melillo, double play depth. Sinisi digs in. Windsor checks him. Murphy stepped back of the bag at third, and the pitch to Sinisi, a strike over the outside corner. 0-1. Benson adjusts his batting gloves. Wearing black and red batting gloves on both hands. Left hand hitter open stance. Barton holds Huffman on at first, and the left hand hitter up there, there's an open hole on the right side. Breaking ball line through that open hole into right base hit. Around second is Huffman. The throw comes in behind him. He gets back in the bag. And there are two on with none out. Catcher Luke Carlin comes up. And the pitching coach Rick Rodriguez on his way out to the hill. Sacramento's bullpen is thin. Yesterday, Marcus McBeth, their closer, he threw a lot of pitchers in two innings. He probably isn't available to close tonight. Santiago Casilla threw a lot of pitches. Ron Flores has worked consecutive nights. Connor Robinson yesterday came in but threw just one pitch. Sean Cohn, Connor Robinson, and David Schaefer, along with left-hander Erasmo Ramirez, would be the four most available tonight. Two on, nobody out. A run home. Carlin coming up. He walked his first time up. We're only in the third inning, and everybody in the Beaver lineup except Carlin and Myro have hits. Carlin drew a walk his first time up. Myro fouled out. He's on deck. Carlin switch hitter batting left handed squares to bunt, pulls it back, takes outside, ball one. There's something Craig Colbert wouldn't have done. Bunted in this spot. First and second with nobody out this early in the game. Rick Renneria likes to bunt much more than Dewey ever did. Huffman at second, Sinisi at first. Carlin squares, Windsor's pitch is bunted foul by Luke. One ball, one strike. Carlin has one sacrifice bunt this year. Carlin squares. Windsor looks back. Pickoff throw back a Huffman. He dives back in. Some of the crowd shouting, swing away! The shortstop, J.J. Fermaniak, who's dwarfed by Jason Windsor, comes in to say something. Now, Windsor trudges back up the back slope of the mound. Ball in his glove, and he looks in to get the sign. Huffman at second, Sinisi at first. One and one, the count on Luke Carlin. Switch hitter batting left-handed. Squares to bunt, the pitch on its way. And now he chops one that's going to head into right field. Huffman around third, he will score. Sinisi digs to third, Carlin to second. He'll be in there with a chop double on a slash. Portland. Carlin squared to bond the corners charged. The shortstop for Maniac went to cover third. The second baseman, Malello, went to cover first. The entire infield was an open hole, and Carlin pulled the bat back after fake.
taking the bunt and he executed perfectly in chopping it right toward the second base position and by the time anybody could get the ball a run was home and Carlin had second a chop double on a fake bunt the infield in second and third nobody out the pitch to Myro he swings at a change and doesn't get it 0 and 1. A chop double for an RBI for Luke Carlin. Sinesia third, Carlin at second. Myro takes a strike at the knees. It's 0-2. The newest Beaver off the DL. Told you a little bit about him earlier in the year. Played in Korea last year. Then at the tail end of the season in the Red Sox chain. We saw him in Vegas in 04 and 05. Myro takes high and away. 1-2. and two. One time New York Yankees property. He came to Vegas to the Dodgers organization at the end of spring training a couple of years ago. Suzuki deals the signs. Now the pitch. A changeup pulled foul outside first. Off the netting in front of the Whitmer Pub. Whitmer Pub is right on the playing field here at PGE Park. That is our barbecue and entertainment area. Derek Barton tried to flip it up into the crowd and hit the net so he had to go back and get it and flip it up again. Windsor from a stretch. The 1-2 change up is fouled off by Myro. And it's still 1-2. and two. That's some play. Carlin faking the bunt and pulling the bat back. And chopping the base hit that goes as a double by the time anybody could get it. The infield is in. Second and third, nobody out. The one, two to Myro, and he takes down and in. Myro had been in extend extended spring training recently, working his way back from the calf injury in spring training. Left hand hitter. He's got some sock. Climbs back in. Man, now the 2-2 pitch to Myro, and Brian takes inside ball three. Myro is another Texan, born and still lives in Fort Worth. He had 22 home runs for Vegas two years ago. The 3-2 pitch is on its way. Change up line toward first. It's a fair ball down the right field line, heading toward the corner. One run scores. Carlin races home. He will score. Myro digs for two. He's around second. He's sputtering toward third. Here he comes. Melillo's relay. Head first dive. A triple for Myro. Seven to two Portland. And there is action out on the Cats pin. is going to blow a gasket coming around second. He's heaving a sigh right now. Standing near third base. Rick Renneria, the manager, his arm around him. Myro coming off that calf injury. Maybe not wanting to test it too much. But he makes it all the way to third base. There's a high towering drive to left field off the bat of Luis Cruz. Back of the fence. It's off the fence. Myro will score. Cruz into second with a double. And the Beavers' extra base hit barrage continues. They've hit for the cycle here in the inning. That's Cruz's second double of the night. It's 8-2 Portland. Here comes Tony DeFrancisco. And that's going to be it for Jason Windsor. The Beavers chase him here in the third inning. Right-hander will be coming in for the Sacramento River Cats. David Schaefer. Beavers have posted a high five here in the third inning. They lead eight to two. And as Schaefer replaces Windsor, we'll take this time out. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Cricket. Truly unlimited wireless. Eight to two Beavers in the third. We'll be back in just a moment. 
I'm Dan Banson, and I'm an Oregon dairy farmer. I started helping my father milk cows when I was seven years old. My father was an international hand milking champion. He competed quite a bit, but I never did come close to him. I think that my daughter, Jamie, having grown up on the farm also has that same interest and connection to animals that I do. With a degree from Oregon State in Animal Science, she understands the business side also. But to bring her back and to pass on the knowledge that we have in operating a dairy, caring for animals, and making a healthy product, I think that the, our dairy will carry on with Jamie. Hit a grand slam of health with three a day of dairy every day. Milk, cheese, and yogurt are a simple way for your family's team to build stronger bones and healthier bodies. Healthy cows, healthy farms, healthy products. That's what we're all about. This message was brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Oregon. David Schaefer comes out of the Cats' bullpen. The first six hitters of the third inning get hits off Jason Windsor, and the Beavers have hit for the cycle in the inning. They very nearly did it in the last inning. In the second, they had a single, a double, and a triple. They had a single and a double in the first inning. Here in the third, Cust homered, Huffman singled, Sinisi singled, Byron fouled off a bunt attempt, and then on the next one, Renneria gave him the slash sign. That's the fake bunt and swing. Fake the bunt, pulled the bat back, and with the entire infield moving either toward the plate or toward the bags, it was all open up the middle, and Carlin chopped one toward the second base position, and by the time the dust had cleared, he had himself an RBI double. Then Brian Myro tripled home two into the right field corner. Luis Cruz hits a double off the left field fence. That sends Jason Windsor to the showers and brings David Schaefer out of the bullpen. And he will face Oscar Robles, who has singled, or rather Craig Stansberry, pardon me, who's fly to right and singled home two. He takes inside from Schaefer, ball one. It's eight to two, Portland. We're in the bottom of the third. Jason Windsor, last year was 13 and one in the PCL, 17 and two in the minor leagues overall. Tied for the minor league lead and wins. His one loss came in August against Fresno. Half swing by Stansberry. He went around on a breaking ball from Schaefer, one and one. Well, the Beavers jump him for eight runs so far. Runner at second belongs to him. Fastball at the knees of Stansberry, one and two. Beavers batted around yesterday in the seventh inning, scoring four times. They would lose six to five in ten innings. They lead eight to two here in the bottom of the third. Stansbury, the seventh man to come up. Still nobody out. Breaking ball outside, two and two. Sixty-six pitches in two-plus innings. For Jason Windsor, 11 hits. Eight runs so far, all earned. Fly ball towards center. Thomas on the run, heading toward the power alley. Now backpedaling to get behind it. Tagging it second is Cruz. Thomas for the catch. Here comes Cruz. Here comes the throw. Cruz slides in safely. Stansbury flies out. Cruz goes over to third on the play. If you're a scout sitting in the stand, you very much like what you just saw from Charles Thomas. He wasn't content to drift over to the ball, a ball he could have just wandered over and caught. No, he sprinted to the ball, so much so that I thought I'd misjudged it, and then it was hit better than it was. He was sprinting to the ball to get behind it so that his momentum could be coming toward third base as he caught it, and he made it a close play, closer than it should have been. Infield in with Robles at the plate. And Oscar takes a breaking ball inside, ball one. He is singled and tripled and knocked home a run. Cruz at third with one down. Infield in, Schaefer from a stretch. Robles a left-hand hitter, Schaefer a right-hand pitcher, and he deals. It's taken outside. Two balls and no strikes. This is David Schaefer's fifth appearance. 1-0, 1.35 ERA. One earned run in six and two-thirds innings. Changeup taken high by Robles. 
Three balls and no strikes. Paul McAnulty on deck. Just one out in the inning. The first six Beavers of the inning got hits. Three of them for extra bases. The 3 0 pitch, and it's taken for a strike by Robles, 3 and 1. In fact, four of them for extra bases. Home run by Cust, and after singles by Huffman and Sinisi, a chop double on a fake bunt by Carlin. Robles takes inside ball four. And their runners at the corners, one down. Paul McEnulty comes up. He smoked the ball twice, doubled down the left field line, lined out to right. Tripled home two after Carlin's fake bunt shot double and then Cruz doubled off the left field fence. David Schaefer came out of the pin. Stansbury flied up to center. Cruz moved over to third. Robles walks and now Paul McAnulty, the ninth man to come to the plate here in the inning. Eight to two Beavers. Runners at the corners. One down. Five runs already home for the Beavos. Middle infield DP depth. Schaefer's pitch. McAnulty takes outside ball one. Schaefer from his belt, ready, and he fires, and McAnulty pops it up. Back a third, coming in, Stavisky going out for Maniac. Cruz coming down the line a third. Stavisky for the catch. And the runners get back. It's the first time all year that the Beavers have sent more than nine men to the plate in an inning. Cust let it off with a home run. He comes up with two out and two on. Has struck out and Homer his home run to start off the inning turned a one run ball game into a two run ball game it is now a six run ball game eight to two Portland Cruz at third Robles at first Gus left hand hitter open stance Schaefer's pitch sinker low ball one Royce Huffman on deck Gus hit three home runs in a game last year in Omaha in early August the 1 0 pitch. Cust takes a strike on the outside corner, 1 and 1. Five times last year, Cust hit two home runs in one game. One of those times he hit a third. The 1 1 pitch. Cust takes inside off the glove of Suzuki. Back to the screen. Cruz scores. To second goes Robles on a wild pitch. Nine to Portland. Two and one the count on Cust. You can close the book on Jason Windsor. Two plus innings, 11 hits, nine runs all earned, a walk, and three strikeouts. Schaefer checks second. The 1-1 one, one to Cust outside. In fact, now to count three and one. Scoreboard, now they change it. It's correct. Three and one. Cust is hitting nine straight with his home run leading off the inning. That matches his season high from last year. 3-1 pitch. It's taken outside. Ball four. Royce Huffman, the 11th man. Here in the inning, comes to the plate. First six hitters of the inning all got base hits, including four for extra bases. And all six have come home to score. Everybody in the Beaver lineup has at least one hit. They have 11 for the game. Oscar Robles is single, triple, and walk. He's at second, cussed at first, and the pitch. Waved at and missed by Huffman. A breaking ball from Schaefer. It's 0-1. The fire truck going by. Now past left field. Out on 18th Avenue. The 0-1 pitch inside to Huffman. One ball, one strike. Vincent Sinisi is on deck. 
It is nine to two Beavers here in the bottom half of the third. Robles at second, Cust at first. We'll look back and the one one kick breaking ball swung on and the fly ball towards center Thomas angling back he's got to play he's got the ball the inning is over but now before the Beavers send 11 men to the plate they score six times they have four extra base hits and we go to the top half of the fourth nine to two Beavers. And Mike Shacker here back at the KKAD studios with their Major League Baseball update. The A's had little trouble scoring runs in Texas this evening. Here's, ro here's rookie Travis Buck batting for the A's in the top of the fourth, and Oakland already leading 8-0. And eight runs, top of the second innings for the Oakland A's. They're looking to add to that here as Buck unloads and unleashes one to right. It is a 10 to nothing lead for Oakland. This kid, Buck, is going to be a player. I mean, he already is. He had the great spring training, like you mentioned, Tom, but there is his first big league home run. Now here's Shannon Stewart at the plate in the top of the eighth with two runners on. That ball clocked by Stewart deep to left field. All the way back and gone. Three-run shot. You just feel so bad for Ron Washington. You really do. Against the A's of all teams. 15 to 3 athletics. And the next up for the A's was Nick Swisher. And Swisher hits it high and hits it deep. Now he shook off Laird to get a different sign. And Swisher deposits it to now make it 16 to 3. The A's went on to beat the Rangers 16 to 4. Now for a couple game winning walk off hits. First in Baltimore where the Blue Jays and Orioles were tied at four in the bottom of the ninth. Orioles trying to end it right here. Bases loaded. One out. Marquecas the one two delivery to him. A ground ball. Second base. That's it. Game over. The Orioles win it five to four. And in Cincinnati the Phillies and Reds were tied at one in the bottom of the tenth. And Brandon Phillips is at the plate for the Reds. Great night, great crowd. Reds open for a great finish. Thanks a lot, Mike. Donnie Murphy, first ball swinging, comes up empty, 0-1. Jack Castle now with a 9-2 lead. Antonio Perez on deck, and then Charles Thomas, bottom third of the batting order here in the top of the fourth for Sacramento. And there's a fastball fouled off, and in the hands of Murphy, it's 0-2. Donnie grounded to short his first time up. Castle, see how he does after a long layoff. The bottom of the third inning took 23 minutes now speed pitch in the dirt it's one and two to Murphy wasn't close enough to get him to chase it man when you tack on the time prior to the inning the 0-2 pitch swung on and missed and down goes Murphy strikes out on what in fact was a 1-2 pitch man for Jack Castle now has struck out four Antonio Perez comes up. He struck out in the change his first time up. Castle delivers, and then there's a fastball for a strike, 0 and 1. Tomorrow, a Toyota pregame show from Colorado Springs begins at 3.40 Pacific, game time 4.05. The 0 1 pitch is on its way, slider outside, 1 and 1. We'll be in the Springs for 4. The 1-1 pitch from Castle, and it swung on and grounded towards short. Oscar Robles gobbles it up, double clutches, throws across and gets him. And they're two away. Charles Thomas comes up. Reach base on Castle's error in the second. Number 39, Charles Thomas. Thomas. Tomorrow and Sunday on our Toyota pregame shows. We'll have Beavers Roundtable with my co-host. Tonight's Beaver starting pitcher, Jack Castle. And our guest will be Royce Huffman. Fly ball to left toward, guess who? Royce Huffman. He's there. He has it. Inning over, as if on cue. An easy inning for Castle. Did he ever need it? Just eight pitches after throwing 68 in the first three. 
And the Rivercats, after spending so much time on the field, will get right back out there. We go to the bottom half of the fourth, 9-2 Portland. I'm a grape. I know. It doesn't sound very glamorous, but I'm no ordinary grape. I'm actually a Pinot Noir. I don't know, it's French or something. <laughs> anyway, I grew up here in Dundee, Oregon. Literally, I mean, I have never moved. But that's okay, because I'm certified organic. And they tell me I make wonderful wine. But it takes more than nice grapes to get a nod from those judges. You know, right before they spit you out. Take the wind, for example. Around here, it makes a big difference. That's why this vineyard uses renewable wind power from PGE. It's subtle. But I can assure you, if you find me in your glass of wine, you will taste the difference. I know, it's hard to believe. But you are listening to a talking grape. This is Susan Sokolblosser from Sokolblosser Winery. Thanks to wind power from PGE, Oregon is a more sustainable place to live. To join us, visit PortlandGeneral.com. It's not whether you win or lose. It's excellence in competition that's the real victory. To honor all the winners out there, Barty Trophy Company provides a large assortment of awards, plaques, and custom engraving. Win or lose, you'll score big with their selection and friendly service. Whether it's team trophies, corporate awards, or recognizing a respected member of our community, you'll find just what you're looking for at Barty Trophy, helping recognized, valued people since 1924. Find out more at BartyTrophy.com. of the fourth. Vincent Sinisi, who singled as part of the six-run third, will lead off the fourth. He's one for two tonight. And he'll be hitting against David Schaefer. Schaefer from a stretch. And he works in EC with a fastball, towering pop fly off third, foul ground. Murphy coming over near the left field lounge, but he runs out of room. No balls, one strike. Jason Windsor, just two plus innings, 11 hits, nine runs all in, one walk, three strikeouts. Jack Castle has worked four innings, given up four hits, two runs, one of them earned. He hasn't walked anybody, and he has struck out four. David Schaefer, he delivers, and the pitch fouled off by Sinisi, 0-2. Take a look at the Miller Lite Major League scoreboard as we go along. You heard the highlights a half inning ago. Sinisi pops another one up off third and foul ground. Another long run for Murphy, and he again runs out of room. Almost an identical play. Still 0-2. There's more foul territory here on the third base side than any other park in the PCL. There's a lot of foul territory, territory on the first base side, too, though not as much as the third base side. Outfield shades Sinisi to the opposite field. Suzuki sets up over the middle, and the pitch from Schaefer, a half swing on a, and it's a foul ball, a hop back to the screen. Sinisi tried to hold up and just got a piece of it. And the count remains 0-2. Padres all over the Rockies tonight, 11-1, to that game in the bottom of the eighth inning at Coors Field. Adrian Gonzalez is at his fourth home run of the year. Top five in San Francisco. Giants lead the Diamondbacks 3-2. to two. The 0-2 to Sinisi. Change up. Whacked over short. That'll get down for a hit. Stavisky to his left. Can't cut it off at the pass. Sinisi around first. Digs for two. Thomas collects the ball in straightaway left and guns the ball into for Maniac. A double for Sinisi. On an 0-2 pitch. That is a great at-bat right there. That's the 12th hit for Portland. Their fifth double to go along with two triples and a home run. Here's Luke Carlin. He's walked. And in a great at-bat and a great call by manager Rick Renneria. Perfectly executed by Carlin. He faked the bunt. 
pulled the bat back. And with the entire infield on the move, he chopped one to the vacated second baseman's position. It went as a double. He dig all the way into second. He hammers one to deep right. Going back on the ball is Perez. It's over his head. One hop up against the fence. Around third comes Sinisi. Carlin into second. They hit the top of the fence and continued on over. They're going to go ahead and let Sinisi score. Ruling that he would have scored on the play anyway. Back-to-back -back doubles for Sinisi and Carlin. It is 10-2 Portland. Here's Brian Myro, Beaver's new first baseman. Free agent signing in the offseason by the Padres organization. I'm in the big leagues a couple of years ago with the Dodgers. Left-hand hitter. He's got power. The pitch to Myro. Fastball outside. Ball one. Rick Renneria working him in in the eighth slot in his first game coming off the DL with a calf injury. He was expected to be with the Beavers at the beginning of the season. Myro will hit higher than eighth in future games. The pitch. Breaking ball outside. 2-0. and oh. Carlin's second double of the night. His second run down at the end of the year. Back-to-back -back doubles for Sinisi and Carlin. Six two-base hits for the Beavos. 2-0 pitch. Taken outside. Three balls and no strikes. Right-hander Sean Cohn is out in the bullpen for the Cats. Schaefer's 3-0 pitch. Taken high on away ball four. Myro draws a walk. Luis Cruz comes up with first and second. And nobody out. A run already home. That'll draw Rick Rodriguez in what's become an all-too-familiar ritual tonight, a visit to the mound for the Cats pitching coach. Luke Carlin, a booming double to right after Vincent Sinisi's opposite field double to the gap in left center after fouling off two 0 2 pitches. Carlin hit his on the first pitch of that at bat. Here's Luis Cruz. He's doubled twice. First and second, no one out. Cruz takes a breaking ball in there for a strike. 0 and 1. It is 10 to 2 Portland. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Carlin at second, Myro at first. The outfield playing Cruz slightly to pull. Schaefer's pitch taken high, a fastball, 89 miles an hour, 1 and 1. Schaefer out of the Reds chain. He was a 32nd rounder by Cincinnati back in 2001. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball waved out and missed 1-2. and two. No big league time for Schaefer. This year's his AAA debut. Arizona boy born and still lives in Flagstaff. Went to Central Arizona Junior College. Schaefer looks back at second and the 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball line down the third baseline. It is a fair ball. Head down into the corner. Carlin races on to score. Myro digs for third. Throw comes into second. Cruz slides. He's in there. He has his third double of the night. 11-2 Portland. Second and third. Nobody out. That's 14 hits in the ballgame for the Beavs. That matches their season high. A week ago tonight in the home opener, they had 14. We're only in the bottom of the fourth. Three doubles tonight for Luis Cruz. He has doubled up on his extra base hit total for the year. Craig Stansberry, a half swing and a slider. He went around, and it's 0-1. Second and third, still nobody out. Two runs already home. Beavers lead 11-2 here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hello. 
Schaefer from a stretch and deals, and Stansberry swings and comes up empty on a breaking ball, 0-2. Seven doubles tonight for the Beavs. The team record in one game is eight. They've done it twice. Last year, July 21st in Las Vegas, they hit eight. The 0-2 pitch, Stansberry fouls it back. That hits off press row and pinballs back down into the seats. On to the stands there. He's fly to right, single to left to drive home the Beavers' first two runs. And fly to center. Now it's with second and third and two down in the second inning. Second and third, nobody out here in the fourth. And the 0-2 pitch, breaking ball, popped up, foul ground, first base side, Suzuki and Barton hustle over Suzuki into a slide, but it drops untouched. And still 0-2 to Stansbury. runs 14 hits two errors for the Beavers two runs four hits no errors for the River Cats going to the count on Stansberry Schaefer deal Stansberry swings and chops it toward third one big hop to Donnie Murphy looks the runners back and throws out Stansberry that's just the first out of the inning Oscar Robles comes up he is singled tripled and walked Luis Cruz becomes the fourth Beaver in the club's seven-year history to get three doubles in one game. Emid Hod in 2003, Jose Nieves in 2004, Greg Sane in 2005, and Luis Cruz tonight. Three two baggers. Oscar Robles with second and third and one down. Beavers lead 11 to two at the pitch, and Robles takes a fastball, low ball one. Robles picked up his fourth run bat at the end of the year with a triple to right center in the second. The outfield shades into the opposite field. Relatively shallow, though not as shallow as before when Robles hit his ball up the alley in right center. The 1-0 from Schaefer, and Oscar swings and grounds it toward the right side. That'll bring a run home. Melillo throws Robles out. And it's 12 to Beavers. Myro scores, Cruz to third. Paul McAnulty comes up. <laughs> McAnulty is doubled, lined out to right, and flat out to left. Hit the ball hard twice. 12-2 Beavers. Three runs home here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Cruz at third with two down. Schaefer from a stretch. He delivers. And the fastball fouled off to the left by McAnulty. Home one. Toyota pregame show tomorrow from Colorado Springs at 340. Hope you can tune in. Spend part of your Saturday with us. Then Sunday will be on the air at 1140 a.m. Monday at 440 in the afternoon. Ground ball towards second, picked up by Melillo. Takes his time, throws out McAnulty, inning over. Beaver sends seven men to the plate, scored three more times. We go to the fifth, 12-2 Portland. Are you ready to save up to $35 instantly on the most efficient trimmer on the market today? Shindaiwa has moved innovation to a whole new level by bringing the best of two-stroke and four-stroke engines together with the patented C4 technology. Performance, durability, and quality. Shindaiwa is the first to start and the last to quit. Increase your productivity with more power and greater efficiency. Save up to $35 instantly on Shindaiwa C4 technology trimmer. Log on to Shindaiwa.com to locate an authorized dealer near you. You know who you are. You're the guy who'd rather take the stairs to your office and wait for the elevator. You're the gal who chooses fruit juice over soft drinks. You're the dad who'd rather teach his kid how to catch than give him a new video game. You're the kind of person who believes in taking control of your health. And HealthNet of Oregon is here to help you. At HealthNet of Oregon, we've designed a healthcare system to provide you the information, services, and processes you need to make better informed decisions about your health. 
because we believe that informed members are healthier members. Maybe that's why more than 5.5 million Americans have made HealthNet a part of their lives and why more than 22,000 doctors in Oregon and Washington have joined the HealthNet network. Take control of your health. Ask your employer about HealthNet of Oregon. Or for more information, call 1-888-802-7001. That's 1-888-802-7001. HealthNet of Oregon. A better decision. If better is possible, then good is not good enough. That's the philosophy you'll find behind the team at Impeccable Painting. With 16 years of experience in Portland, we feature exquisite quality in both commercial and residential painting and remodeling. From interior and exterior texturing and drywall to pressure washing and complete restoration. Give us a call. We're in your yellow pages. We're impeccable painting, always striving to provide you with a little extra. Because from start to finish, we are impeccable. Jack Castle delivers a strike to Kevin Melillo. He comes back and Melillo chops one foul outside first 0-2. It's 12-2 Portland. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Castle back to work after another long layoff, though not as long as after the top of the third inning. The Beavers scored six times in the bottom of the third, and it was almost a half hour before Castle took the mound again. Jack into his wind, and the 0-2 to Melillo slider fouled off. Still nothing in two. Castle into his fifth inning. In the first three innings, he threw 68 pitches, 33 in the first. Gave up one unearned run. Melillo battled him for seven pitches leading off the ball game before singling to right. Twelve runs, 14 hits for Portland, two runs, four hits for the Cats. We're in the top of the fifth. Good crowd out here enjoying it on this Friday night. 0-2 pitch, fouled off again by Melillo, and it's still 0-2. Now in the bottom of the ninth inning in Colorado, 11-1 Padres. Top six in San Francisco, 4-2 Giants. Change up, chopped foul. Melillo hangs tough again. Still 0-2. Top of the fourth inning at Dodger Stadium, 8-1. to one. Dodgers lead the Pirates. The 0-2 from Castle bends Melillo back up and in. One ball, two strikes. Cardinals beat the Cubs 2-1. to one. Preston Wilson at a two-run home run in the seventh inning for the Cards' runs. Change up, strike three called over the outside corner after the fastball up and in. The change up away. That's a great sequence right there. And Castle collects his fifth strikeout. J.J. Fermaniak comes up. He's grounded to short and struck out. The Nationals got a run in the top of the 14th inning. They made it stand up. They beat Florida 6-5. It's fouled off by Fermaniak. 4-1. Reds beat the Phillies. Two to one. They got a run in the ninth and a run in the tenth. Slider pulled towards short. Oscar Robles picks it up on the third hop, flips it across in time to Myro, and there are two down. All strikes for Castle in this inning. All nine pitches. But on Boca Chica comes up. Scott Hatterberg hit a ninth inning home run to tie it for the Reds at one, and then. They scored a run in the bottom of the 10th to win it. But Atlanta beat the Mets 7-3. Tim Hudson improves to 3-0. Fastball for a strike. 0-1 to Haram Boca Chica. Astros beat Milwaukee 6-5. Houston scored four times in the top of the ninth inning. It waved at and missed by Boca Chica 0-2. Milwaukee scored three in the bottom of the ninth, but fell a buck shy. 0-2 the count on Boca Chica. Castle's pitch on the way. Fastball misses. That's the first ball he's thrown in the inning in 12 pitches. And looking at it again, he had missed with one to Melillo. Just the second ball and the pitch. Slider outside. It's 2-2. Two and two. Melillo had fouled off three straight before Castle backed him up with 
some high tight chin music and then struck him out looking on a change on the outside corner. Now two and two to Boca Chica. Two outs and no one on. And Castle's pitch and it's a change swung out and missed and down he goes. Two more strikeouts for Castle. He's struck out six in five innings and he's been in thorough command since the third. We go to the last half of the fifth. 12-2 Portland. very often you get twice as much as you were expecting in life. So when one of those rare two-for-one opportunities comes along, like rewards double points at Fred Meyer, you've got to take advantage. I mean, a chance to double the rewards points on your entire purchase at Fred Meyer is huge. You can plan your weekly shopping around it. It's a great chance to save on the foods your family enjoys all the time and really rack up points towards your next rebate. Think about how many points you'll earn on that flat screen TV or leather recliner you've been thinking about. All you have to do is spend $100 to qualify. So grab your list, head to your neighborhood Fred Meyer, and get ready to double the rewards points on your entire purchase. You'll find it at Fred Meyer. If you haven't already signed up for our Fred Meyer Rewards card, it's easy. You can sign up and start earning double points the same day. What's on your list today? You'll find it at Fred Meyer. Again for the ticket, man. Sure. Thanks, the squad. See, see, that's cheap. Steve, do you realize your hair has been insulting me since the second I picked you up? I went somewhere besides Supercuts. They gave me the most annoying haircut I've ever had, and I don't know what to do. Just ignore it. You're gonna have to go to Supercuts. There's one a block from the stadium. As soon as the game's over, I'll go. Where'd you get those girly sunglasses? The trash? So I'm gonna go. Yeah, do that. Go to an untrained stylist, you get bad, bad hair. Stick with the best trained stylist in the biz. Supercuts. Every time. Sean Cohn, his side armor, comes out of the Rivercats bullpen to make his second appearance of the series. It's 12-2 Portland. We're going to the bottom half of the fifth. Sean Cohn, K-O-H-N, and he'll face Jack Cust, Royce Huffman, and Vincent Sinisi. Cust has struck out, homered, and walked. Came to the place twi played twice in the third inning. Let it off with a homer. He gave the Beavers a 4-2 lead. By the time the inning had come to an end, the Beavers had plated six runs, and they led 9-2. to two. They lead 12-2 now. So here is Cust against the side-arming right-hander, Sean Cohn. Cust, a powerful left-hand hitter. And he takes a slider for a strike on one. Rich Burke here at PGE Park. Mike Shacker, my studio coordinator. We gave you the National League side of the Miller Lite Major League scoreboard. On the AL side, Baltimore, two in the eighth, one in the ninth, to beat Toronto 5-4. Cust takes inside. It's one and one. White Sox beat Detroit 5-4. Cleveland knocked off Tampa Bay 4-3. There were a ton of one-run ball games in the major leagues today. Oakland beat Texas. This is the antithesis of the one-run ball game. 16-4 A's. Change up for a strike to Cust. It's one and two. The A's had an eight-run second. KC beat Minnesota 11-7. Bottom of the seventh in Anaheim. Eight-nothing Angels over the Mariners. One-two pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Down goes Cust. Royce Huffman comes up. He struck out. Single fly to center. meeting of the year between the Red Sox and Yankees in the 95th anniversary of the opening at Fenway Park. First game at Fenway played April 20th, 1912. Pitch outside to Huffman, ball one. Exactly 10 days after the Titanic set sail and exactly six days after it sank, Fenway Park opened. It fouled off by Huffman, one and one. In the next seven years after Fenway opened, the Red Sox would win four World Series. They had won one back in 1903, so they won five of the first 15 World Series. Huffman swings and comes up empty at the sidearm off-speed pitch, and it's one and two. But after that, it was Red Sox fans' hopes that sank. 
until three years ago when they at last after 86 years won it all. The one two pitch to Huffman he takes outside two and two but today the Red Sox and Yankees meeting for the first time. Alex Rodriguez hit two home runs in that game. The 2-2 two -two pitch outside 3-2. and two. And the Yankees led it 6-2 to two going to the bottom half of the eighth inning. In the eighth inning for the Red Sox, David Ortiz doubled. Manny Ramirez walked. J.D. Drew, Drew grounded out. That put runners at second and third. 3-2 pitch, a drive to right center field. Perez on the run, heading toward the power out. It reaches up, can't get it. One hop up and over the fence. A double for Royce Huffman. That is the eighth double of the night for Portland, and it ties a club record. Luis Cruz has three doubles. Luke Carlin has two. Vincent Sinisi, Royce Huffman, Paul McAnulty have one each. Oscar Robles and Brian Myro each have triples, and Jack Cust has a home run. Here is Sinisi, runner at second, one down. 15 hits for the Beavers, a new season high. Sidearm slider for a strike, 0-1 to Sinisi. Tim Stoffer is out in the Beavers' pen. 12-2 Beavers. We're in the bottom half of the fifth. In fact, look at it again. It might be Steve Watkins out there. Side on fastball underneath the hands of Sinisi. It's one and one. It is Watkins out of the bullpen just off the DL. We'll look back and the one one pitch on the way. Foul back by Sinisi. One and two. Today the Padres traded Manny Alexander to the Nationals organization for a player to be named later or cash. They brought Watkins and Myro off the DL. Steve Watkins had pitched for the Beavers a couple of years ago. Very likable right-hander and happy to have him back. The one-two pitch from Sean Cohn. Sidearm slider fouled off to the left. Murphy a long run, but it's back and out of play. Still one and two to Vincent Sinisi. So after J.D. Drew grounded out, runners were at second and third. The Red Sox trailed at six to two. Mike Lowell singled to bring home a run. That made it six to three. Mariano Rivera came in with runners at the corners and one down in the eighth inning looking for a five out save. And the Yankees still leading six to three. The one two pitch change up inside and it's two and two to Sinisi. Jason Veritek singled to make it six to four. Coco Chris tripled home two to tie the game. This is up Mariano Rivera. Alex Cora single to bring Chris home. And the Red Sox would hang on to win it 7-6. A-Rod lined out to second with a runner on in the ninth. The 2-2 two -two pitch just inside to Sinisi. Mm. That was close. I can hear the shouts. Well, not really, but I can imagine what they're shouting out of the Rivercats dugout. A hey, Blue, check the scoreboard. Open the strike zone. Malinsky not going to do it. 3-2 pitch. Breaking ball outside. Ball four. 12-2 Beavers here in the bottom of the fifth. Jack Castle, 90 pitches in five innings. Two runs, one of them earned. He may be gone after five. Luke Carlin has walked, doubled twice, driven home two runs, scored three times. He has two of the Beavers' club record tying eight doubles tonight. Sidearm breaking ball in there for a strike. It's 0-1. Beavers have four singles, eight doubles, two triples, and a home run. Going to right-hander comes set. Man delivers on 0-1. Sidearm cutter inside. And it's 1-1 one one to Carlin. Switch hitter batting left-handed. Huffman at second, Sinisi at first. 
The outfield play is called into the opposite field in center and in left. The right fielder Perez is straight away. Carlin hit a ringing double to right center his last time up. The time before, a fake bun and swing chop hit to second for a double. He takes a strike on the inside corner. It's one and two. Big play in that third inning where the Beaver scored six runs. Carlin had shown bunt on two pitches and then with a count one and one. The middle infielders were going to the corners. The corners were charging a lot of holes and Carlin chopped a base hit after faking bunt. Side on breaking ball outside. Two and two to Luke Carlin. Twelve two Beavers bottom of the fifth. Huffman at second, Sinisi at first. The 2-2 pitch, Carlin takes just inside, ball three. David Schaefer, two innings, three hits, three runs all earned. Two walks, no strikeouts. That after Jason Wenzel went two-plus, gave up 11 hits and nine runs all earned. The 3-2 pitch to Carlin. Luke takes inside, ball four, and they're loaded up with one down for Brian Myro, who was fouled out, tripled home two, and walked and scored twice in his Beavers debut. Boomer the Beaver, the club mascot in one of the sweeps just behind us. Rick Rodriguez, the pitching coach. They're going to start charging him rent at the mound. He's had to go out there time after time tonight. is loaded one down. Beavers don't have a grand slam this year. Myro takes a sidearm breaking ball in the back door for a strike. On one. Brian Myro hit a grand slam against Portland back in August of 05. Here he's batting for the Beavers. And he swings. It's a high fly ball into deep right field. Perez on the run, on the track, reaches up to backhand it. Huffman tags at third. He races home to score. 13 to 2 Portland. Myro almost hit a slam. Perez ran it down on the track after a long run. He collects his third RBI of the night. Vincent Sinisi tagged at second, moved over to third. And Luis Cruz comes up. 13 to 2 Portland. Great running catch by Antonio Perez. Cruz has doubled three times tonight. He swings and comes up empty on a slider 0-1. Carlin at first, Sinisi at third. From a stretch is Sean Kahn, the side-arming right-hander, working on the right-hand hitting Luis Cruz. Fastball well-placed over the outside corner 0-2. Cruz has tied a club record by doubling three times in the same game, and we're just in the bottom of the fifth inning. Runners at the corners with two down. The 0-2 pitch from Cohn, breaking ball outside, backhanded by Suzuki. One ball, two strikes. Cohn from a stretch and the 1-2 pitch, breaking ball outside again. Two balls and two strikes. Brian Myro made a bid for another extra base hit, but Perez ran it down. 2-2 pitch to Luis Cruz. He swings and fouls it off to the right. Back into the seat, still 2-2. Two two. Do you think Luis could get his fourth double of the night? With one out, Huffman a ground rule double to right center. Sinisi walked, Carlin walked. Myro is sack fly. Cones 2 2 to Cruz. Breaking ball taken low. Full count. 
Craig Stansberry on deck. Beaver sent 11 men to the plate in the third inning, scored six times. Seven men to the plate in the fourth, scored three times. Proves the sixth man to come up here in the fifth. The 3 2 pitch, Louis swings and fouls it off. Still a full count. Team to two Beavers. We're in the bottom half of the fifth. Cone set. Cruz waits. And the 3 2 pitch. The runner goes from first. It's on the outside corner. Strike three call. Beavers get one. They leave two. We go to the top half of the sixth inning. Steve Watkins will come in and make his Beavers debut after. Five innings from Jack Castle. It's 13 to 2, Portland. This is Portland Beavers baseball on sunny 1550 KKAD, Vancouver, Portland. I'm a yellow notepad, 28 lines per page with a few French fry stains. Not exactly high end technology, but I don't mind. You see, I'm the yellow pad Portland General Electric engineer Steve Higgins used to sketch out his thoughts when PGE joined in a team effort to bring more wind turbines to Oregon. And now, after hours in his pickup and construction trailers, those turbines are real, pretty much like Steve scratched them on my surface. Dozens of towering new windmills churning out the kind of clean, limitless, sustainable power that all Oregonians can be proud of, that they can be part of. As for me, I think I'll be around a while, dog ears and all. People may work on computers, but they dream on yellow pads. Hi, I'm Steve Higgins, inviting you to sign up for Renewable Power. For details, visit PortlandGeneral.com or call 503-228-6322. PGE, we do this every day. Craftsmanship. It's a word that means more than just quality. It's that expert attention taken from beginning to end. Your friends at Scotty's Auto Body have a passion for craftsmanship. From minor upholstery repairs to paint touch-ups to complete rebuilds, their goal is simple. Superior work, fair prices, and outstanding customer service. Call Scotty's Auto Body at 648-4275 or see them online at scottysautobody.com. Scotty's Auto Body, proud to serve the community and to bring you Beaver Baseball. Breaking news from our special agent, Aaron Insurance. Overpriced auto insurance is trying to drain the nation's spending power. Can it be stopped? Luckily, overpriced auto insurance is no match for insurance online auto insurance. That's because insurance can save you hundreds. And why insurance is one of the fastest growing auto insurance companies in America. Stop overpriced auto insurance from draining your spending power. Join the fight to save yourself hundreds on auto insurance. Get your quote from insurance.com today. Not available in all states. Jack Castle leaves after five solid innings, four hits, two runs, one earned, no walks, six strikeouts. He had to throw 33 pitches in the first inning, so he leaves after five innings and 90 pitches, and he leaves with a 13-2 lead. Now Steve Watkins will face Derek Barton, and the right end is first pitch of the 07 season, in there for a strike on one. Watkins reacquired by the Padres in the offseason into his windup and the 0-1 pitch fastball outside one and one Kurt Suzuki on deck and then Brian Stavisky Watkins has been down with the Padres extended spring training camp 1-1 pitch fouled off by Barton one and two so this is his first appearance of the year Watkins winds and delivers on one two breaking ball swung on and beaten foul at home plate that I believe hit Barton's front foot and it's still one and two Steve Watkins pitched for Portland back in 2003 and 2004 made 36 appearances for the Beavs 30 out of the bullpen then got called up to make his big league debut with San Diego Pitch inside the Barton, an 89 mile an hour fastball. It's two and two. 11 games with the Padres in 04, 6.28 ERA. Then two years ago with the Indians, Triple A Buffalo affiliate. Last year with New Orleans at the time, a Nationals affiliate. Change up outside. Full count to Derek Barton. He has reached base on an air and doubled. 
Stephen Douglas Watkins. Waddy winds and deals on 3-2. There's a sky-high fly ball to left. Coming over toward the line, Royce Huffman looks up into the black and drops the ball. And Barton is aboard on the error on Royce Huffman. Huffman is a very good first baseman. He hadn't played a lot of outfield in his career, but he's played some. And he flat out dropped that ball. Play down, number six, catcher Kurt Suzuki. Kurt Suzuki comes up. He has singled and struck out. Watkins last year with New Orleans. 20 starts, one relief appearance. He was 7-7, seven and 3.85 seven, ERA. Watkins checks Barton at first. They're not holding him on. There's a ground ball through the hole. Left side, base hit for Suzuki. Down to second goes Barton. Brian Stavisky comes up. 13 to 2 Portland. Beavers have their season high in runs and hits. And their previous high in runs was a week ago tonight. Their previous high in hits a week ago tonight when they won 10, 9, and 12 innings in the home opener over Fresno. Wow, it's hard to believe that there's a week ago tonight. Once the season gets going, it just flies by. Chopper to the right side. Myro fields are on the second hop. Underhand to Watkins covering in time. The runners move up 90 feet. One down. Stavisky grounds out to first. Donnie Murphy comes up. Third baseman tonight, a right-hand hitter. Beavers have eight doubles tonight. That ties a club record. Luis Cruz has three of those, tying the club individual record. They have a couple of triples and a home run. Jack Cust went deep. Watkins pitch. Slider swung on and missed by Donnie Murphy. 0-1. Antonio Perez on deck. The last day of the year, last season in Salt Lake City, the Beavers won 9-5. to five. They pounded out 16 hits. The 0-1 pitch, curveball pulled on the ground toward third, picked up there by Craig Stansberry. He throws out Murphy. Another run comes home. Now 13-3, Portland. Man, Antonio Perez comes up. Perez has struck out and grounded the short. Watkins said, looks back at second. His pitch, there's a fly ball towards center. Angling back is Vincent Sinisi. He has it, and the inning is over. An unearned run. I hit a man left, and we go to the last half of the sixth. 13-3, to three, Portland. Welcome to Lardo. Yeah, can I get an order of uh, spare tires? Yeah, what size? Plump, chubby, or incredibly huge? How about incredibly huge? You want love handles with that? Oh, yeah. What are you really getting in your combo meal? The new Subway Fresh Fit Meals fit into the American Heart Association's approach to a healthy lifestyle. Tasty, low-fat subs, better for you sides, and a drink. Subway, eat fresh. Fat content refers to regular 16-inch salmon, white or wheat bread without condiments that contain fat. See store for additional nutritional information, including sodium content. Products made by Subway is a registered trademark of Doctors Associates, Inc. This is Chuck Southcott. YMT Vacations' brand new 24-day Italian tour and cruise for Music for Your Life listeners on MSC Line's state-of-the-art Lyrica is incredible. Our adventure begins November 11th. We fly to Rome, see Italy in all its splendor, experience the birthplace of the Renaissance, as well as historic and religious sites such as St. Peter's. Bask in the beauty of Tuscany. We'll enjoy the art in Florence before boarding the Lyrica on the Italian Riviera. We'll relax as we cruise the Mediterranean, stopping at Barcelona, Casablanca. We'll bask in White Glove Services, we sail the Atlantic to the Caribbean, Barbados, the Dominicans, St. George, much more. We'll disembark in Fort Lauderdale, 24 days from only 
$1.99 per person plus tax. 1-800-922-9000 includes six-day tour of Italy, 16-day Mediterranean, Atlantic, and Caribbean cruise, plus all meals on ship and memories forever. Low-cost airfare also available. 1-800-922-9000. Join me on YMT's Italy tour and cruise. 800-922-9000. Breaking news from our special agent, Aaron Insurance. Overpriced auto insurance is trying to drain the nation's spending power. Can it be stopped? Luckily, overpriced auto insurance is no match for insurance online auto insurance. That's because insurance can save you hundreds. And why insurance is one of the fastest growing auto insurance companies in America. Stop overpriced auto insurance from draining your spending power. Join the fight to save yourself hundreds on auto insurance. Get your quote from insurance.com today. Not available in all states. Going back out to work for the River Cats. First pitch fouled off to the right by Craig Stansberry. And it's nothing and one. Beers have 15 hits tonight. Stansberry's one for four out of the leadoff slot. Sidearm slider outside. And it is one and one. Cone working from the first base side of the rubber. The pitch to Stansberry grounded past the mound, past second, into center base hit. There's the 16th hit for Portland. And that's just their fifth single. Oscar Robles comes up. He is singled, tripled, walked, and grounded at the second. The ground out brought home a run. Robles a left-hand hitter. Stansbury leads at first. They won't pay any attention to him. He won't go anywhere. Now with the Beavers leading by 10. Slider for a strike. And it's 0-1. The 0-1 pitch taken outside 1-1. One one. I'm not sure if even Whitey Herzog would have ran in this situation. Now the pitch from Cohn, breaking ball outside. Suzuki sprang out of his uh, crouch to get it. And it's two and one. Whitey Herzog was criticized by opposing managers when Whitey was with the Cardinals and earlier with the Royals, but especially with the Cardinals because he had such a speedy team. The two-one pitch, and Robles swings and fouls it down the left field line, slicing back, and into the Beaver bullpen. It drops untouched. And it's two and two. Opposing managers would criticize Herzog because he would continue to steal bases with a big lead. And Whitey made the point that, hey, you still have that bats left. Okay, I'll stop trying to steal bases and get a bigger lead if you stop trying to score runs and come back. And when you think about it that way, it makes sense. 2-2 two -two pitch, strike three called over the inside corner, and down goes Robles. He thought the pitch was inside. Oscar now two for four. One away for the right fielder, Paul McAnulty. However, I don't even think Whitey would run in this spot. A ten-run lead in the bottom of the sixth. Paul McAnulty is doubled, line to right, flied to left, and grounded to second. Oh, Josh Howard going to pinch hit. Howard climbs in a left-hand hitter, batting for McAnulty. Man, he should stay in the game and play right field. Breaking ball missed. It is 1-0. On deck is Jack Cuss. So Howard batting for McAnulty with Stansberry at first and one down here in the bottom of the sixth. Beavers lead 13-3. The pitch to Howard. Josh swings and fouls it off. 1-1. One one. Howard hadn't played much. He's made just one start. He's 0 for 8 and has struck out five times. A couple of nights ago, he pitched the ninth inning and got three fly ball outs. Worked a 1, 2, 3, 9. The 1, 1 pitch to Josh Howard, and he takes a strike. 1 and 2. Beaver's bullpen a little thin with the call-ups. And Howard, he worked the ninth inning on Wednesday in the Beaver's 4 to 1 loss. 
The one-two pitch. It's popped up foul off to the left out of play. Still one and two. In the bottom of the ninth inning a couple of days ago, the Beavers had an RBI base hit by Cost. They were still trailing four to one, but had they gotten a couple of more guys on base, they would have been a home run away from making Josh Howard the winning pitcher. Howard pinch hitting for Paul McAnulty here in the bottom of the sixth. One two pitch to Howard sidearm pitch chased and missed outside the zone down he goes. Fourth strikeout for Sean Cohn is second in this inning. And Jack Cost comes up he has struck out at a solo home run walked and struck out again. Left-hand hitter against the right-hander, Sean Cohn. There's a right-hander out in the Rivercats bullpen. Cohn's pitch. Sidearm off-speed pitch outside ball one. Cohn's 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball outside. Two balls, no strikes. The backup catcher, David Castilla, was warming up in the bullpen to pitch. There's a high fly ball off the bat of Cust to deep left field. Way back in, it is on the boardwalk. Two-run home run for Jack Cust. 15-3, Portland. Many in the crowd standing, applauding Cust. He had five multi-home run games last year. This is his second this year. Both on this homestand. He hit it out to left center in the third. He hits it out to left here in the sixth. Royce Huffman comes up. He's two for four. That's the Beavers' 17th hit. Breaking ball on the outside corner, 0-1. On the scoreboard, they say the Beavers have 15 runs on 76 hits. It might seem that way to the River Cats, but they have 17. Breaking ball outside, 1-1. One one. Pitch inside to Huffman, 2-1. Royce takes an off-speed pitch inside. And it's three balls and one strike. Vincent Sinisi on deck. Now Cohn comes back on 3-1. Inside, ball four. We'll see if that's going to be it for Cohn. I believe the right-hander out in the bullpen is their backup catcher, David Castillo. Here comes Vincent Sinisi. scored in every inning but the first. They lead 15 to 3. Pitch taken outside by Sinisi. Ball one. It is Castillo warming up out of the pen. The backup catcher just off the DL. There's a line shot to second. Caught by Kevin Melillo and the inning is over. Sinisi roped it but lines out. The Beavers get two more on Jack Cuss. Second home run of the game. His sixth of the year. That might move him into the league lead. We go to the top half of the seventh. 15 to three Beavers. Let's head back to the studio and Mike Shacker. Thank you very much, Rich. In Miami, it took the Nationals 14 innings to beat the Marlins 6 to 5. Here's Chris Snelling at the plate for the Nationals in the top of the 14th, breaking the 5-5 tie. Hard hit off of Jacobs. 
The ball rests with Wood. Coming to the plate. The throw. Olimo drops it. He's safe. Jacobs took it. May have taken it off the face. Wood made the throw, and Olivo couldn't grab it. In Milwaukee, J.J. Harding hit his third home run of the season. And now J.J. Harding leads him off, and there's a deep drive. And it is gone. A home run for J.J. Harding. Two to one, Brewers. Well, early in the count, J.J. Harding's looking for something to pull, and he looked like he got a high breaking ball from Albers, and he made the most of it. Number three on the year for Hardy. That home run gave the Brewers a 2-1 lead over the Astros, but Houston went on to beat the Brew Crew 6-5. The Pirates are in Los Angeles this evening, and the Dodgers had a 6-1, 6 run rally in the bottom of the third. Here's starting pitcher Randy Wolf knocking in two of those runs for L.A. And Wolf, not a bad hitter up there, and he whacks one down the right field line. That's going to be a base hit and roll to the wall. In comes Martin. Here comes Betamid on the double, and the Dodgers now lead 8-1. the Dodgers are leading the Pirates 9-1. to Back to you, Rich. Okay, thanks a lot, Mike. Steve Watkins out for a second inning, and the Beavers lead 15-3 to going to the top half of the seventh. And Watkins will face 9-1-2, and two, Charles Thomas, Kevin Melillo, and J.J. Fermaniak. Jack Castle went five solid innings, four hits, two runs, one of them earned. No walks, six strikeouts. Watkins gave up an unearned run in the sixth because of a drop fly ball by Royce Huffman in left. And the pitch to Charles Thomas. He takes a strike over the outside corner, 0-1. The 0-1 pitch coming up. And it's one on popped up right around the home plate area. Luke Carlin, the catcher, backing up. He's got a play. Makes the catch about 10 feet up the third baseline. And there's one down. That brings up the second baseman, Kevin Melillo. Kevin Melillo has singled, grounded the second, and struck out. 15 to three Beavers, top of the seventh, and the pitch. Digging low. One ball, no strikes. Three runs on five hits for the Cats. 15 runs, a season high. 17 hits for the Beavers. There's a fly ball toward right center, heading over on the ball. Sinisi, the Beavers center fielder tonight. Benson brings it in. And there are two away. J.J. Fermaniak comes up. The season high in hits for the Beavers last year was 18. They had 18 hits at Las Vegas on August the 18th. That's when they won 16 to 15 in 11 innings. Watkins pitch. Breaking ball waved at and missed by Fermaniak. 0-1. These two guys, teammates with Portland back in 2004. The pitch from Watkins to Fermaniak. J.J. swings and chops it foul at home plate 0-2. The Beavers' high in runs last year was 16. So they're one shy of their high in runs and hits for all of last year. The pitch coming up from Watkins. Curve ball taken outside. Didn't miss by much. Good deuce by Waddy. And it's one and two. Two outs and none on in the top of the seventh. Watkins winds and delivers on one, two. Breaking ball misses low. Two and two. They're on Boca Chica. The next hitter do up. But David Castillo is on deck to pinch hit for him. And the pitch on the way. It's inside. Ball three. Castillo may come in to pitch. The thing is, we're only in the top half of the seventh inning, so if they bring in a position player, they're going to ask him to get six outs. 3-2 pitches down in the way. Ball four. A walk to Fermaniak. 
And here comes Castillo to bat for Boca Chica. David Castillo comes up to get his first at bat of the year. He had been on the disabled list. Castillo had been on the DL until now. This is his first game, his first at bat. For Maniac at first, and the pitch misses outside to Castillo. Ball one. Castillo, a fifth year pro. Last year, one at bat with Sacramento. A little bit of time in Stockton, a little bit at Double A Midland as the backup catcher in each instance. The pitch to Castillo, he swings and comes up empty. It's one and one. Last year, he combined to have 163 at bats. And he hit right about 215. For Maniac at first with two down. And the pitch to Castillo, it's taken high. Two and one. You might see Tim Stoffer in relief tonight. Beavers lead 15 to three. We're in the top half of the seventh. Watkins got the first two outs without incident. Went to 0 and 2 on for Maniac, and then walked him on the next four. He's now 2 and 1 on Castillo, the pinch hitter, batting for Boca Chica. Ground ball to short. Robles has it. Goes the short way to Cruz. He's on the bag. The inning is over. A walk and nothing else. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Fred Meyer. What's on your list today? You'll find it at Fred Meyer. And go to the bottom of the seventh inning. 15 to 3, Portland. When I start singing. What makes the perfect sandwich? We ask the experts. The bread. The bread. It's definitely the bread. Kids are the experts when it comes to knowing what they like. And when it comes to bread, they like Fran's Premium Big White. It's good. Fresh baked, heart healthy, vitamin enriched Franz Premium Big White has been a Northwest favorite for nearly 100 years. And there's a good reason why. It's baked right here in Portland, not trucked in from some bakery in California. So it's always soft and fresh, just the way kids like it. My sandwiches never come home from school. I even eat the crust. Next time you're in the store, look for the big family size loaf in the red, white, and blue package and choose Franz Premium White Bread. Your family will thank you for it. Thanks, Mom. Franz Bread, the good bread. Franz Bread, the good bread, flavored beyond compare. Franz Bread is baked fresh right here in Portland and available at your favorite grocer. We were at the game. When the beer guy came around, nobody thought to check for GHT. We just ordered. I took a sip, and the taste was all watered down. I checked the label. There it was, right after the L and the I. The vendor dealt us a light beer with GHT. Lucky thing, we got our hands on some Miller L-I-T-E. Before you drink a light beer, check the label. If you see the letters GHT, you're not getting the light beer that invented light beer. Miller L-I-T-E. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Live responsibly. If you're looking for a better path to success, consider the U.S. Army. The Army offers skills and challenges which can help you prepare for a whole lifetime of success. The Army also offers more than $71,000 for college if you qualify, or up to $65,000 to repay qualified student loans. Enlist today and you could also be eligible for enlistment bonuses of up to $40,000. For the location of your local Army recruiter, call 1-800-USA-ARMY. Paid for by the U.S. Army. GoArmy.com. I guess you're Kirk. Your resume is mildly impressive. Thank you, sir. I've had some pretty... Hey, it looks like your Fantasyland resume's a big hit, Kirk. Is that your hair talking? I usually go to Supercuts, but I stop somewhere else on the way here. Look, kid, there's a Supercuts just south on Lake. I'd go now. Just as soon as we're done here. That picture on your desk. What are those people, sick? Yeah, we're done. Hair consulting in the hands of an experience. Our stylists get the best instruction in the biz. Supercuts. Every time. <laughs> pitch. He very much has a catcher's motion out there. He deals one that's waved at and missed by Luke Carlin 0-1. This is Castillo's second ever pitching appearance. He is a catcher by trade. Catchers will 
bring their hand up toward their ear and make what they call a peg. And the pitch pulled on the ground to the right side by Carlin. And it's picked up there by Derek Barton. He waves off Castillo and takes the bag, and there's one down. Brian Myro comes up in his 2007 debut after coming off the Beavers' disabled list. He was down at extended spring training after suffering a calf injury at the end of regular spring training. And coming off the DL tonight, Myro is fouled out, tripled home to walk, and had a sack fly on a running catch and right by Antonio Perez. Myro takes inside, ball one. Sean Cohn went two innings after Schaefer went two and Jason Windsor went two plus. That's a line shot, ripped foul down the right field line. And it's one and one. Castillo made a pitching appearance last year for Double A Midland. One inning. Faced three hitters. Faced four hitters. Walked one. Big slow breaking ball outside. Ball two, two and one. Luis Cruz on deck. Cruz has doubled three times and struck out. The pitch to Myro, he takes high and away. Three balls, one strike. Fifteen three Beavers in the seventh. Myro lines one to first, caught by Barton. On ground out to first, a line out to first. Myro's hit the ball hard three times tonight. He's one for three with a triple and a sack fly and three runs knocked home. Here's Luis Cruz. He doubled to left center in the second and scored. Doubled off the left field fence in the third to drive home a run and scored. Doubled down the left field line in the fourth to bring home a run. He swings and pops it up foul. Back and out of play. And the count 0-1. Castillo delivers on 0-1. Breaking ball down in the way. So David Castillo, a catcher, will be asked to get six outs tonight. He's gotten two of them. 15-3 Beavers. We're in the bottom half of the seventh. And the pitch to Luis Cruz. A fastball popped up on the left side of the infield. J.J. Fermaniak calling for it. He makes the catch. The inning is over. So Castillo, the backup catcher, comes in to pitch. It's not such a tough game, huh? The Beavers don't score for the first time since the first inning, and they go in order for the first time tonight. And we go to the eighth, 15 to three, Portland. Breaking news from our special agent, Aaron Insurance. Overpriced auto insurance is trying to drain the nation's spending power. Can it be stopped? Luckily, overpriced auto insurance is no match for insurance online auto insurance. That's because insurance can save you hundreds. And why insurance is one of the fastest growing auto insurance companies in America. Stop overpriced auto insurance from draining your spending power. Join the fight to save yourself hundreds on auto insurance. Get your quote from insurance.com today. Not available in all states. Hi, I'm David Oreck. I was handed an email that a lady named Joyce Carlson sent to her daughter. It goes... I bought a vacuum about a year ago. It was a bagless kind, and I hated it. To begin with, I thought, oh, this is neat. You could actually see the dirt being sucked out of the carpets and swirling around about the clear plastic tube. But then you had to dump it out. It was about the most unhygienic thing I had ever had to deal with. And the filter got all clogged up, so you had to use another vacuum to clean the filter off. It was crazy. Every time I used it, I would grumble and whine. So we bought an Auric XL, and I love it. It's light to handle, and the best part is it has that disposable bag. Friends, don't whine and grumble. Try my newest 8-pound Auric XL free for 30 days. Call top half of the eighth inning. Rich Burke here at PGE Park. Mike Shacker back in studio. Beavers have pounded out 17 hits tonight. And that includes a franchise record tying eight doubles. 
will go along with two triples and two home runs. Jack Cust has gone deep twice. So 12 of the 17 hits for extra bases. Here's Derek Barton, the first baseman. Lefty to lefty. Rain deals one outside, ball one. Roger Royce Ring. Acquired by the Padres out of the Mets organization. And the 1-0 pitch, it's taken outside. Two balls and no strikes to Derek Barton. Barton has reached base on an air, doubled, and reached base on an air again. One by Luis Cruz, the second baseman. One on Royce Huffman, the left fielder. Pitch outside, three balls, no strikes. Steve Watkins, two innings in his first outing with the Beavers since the 2004 season. The 3-0 pitch, and it's taken low, ball four. Barton walks on four pitches, leading off the eighth. By the way, Steve Watkins told me last year on a pregame show that he wanted to be in the big leagues, of course, but if he couldn't, he'd really like to pitch for Portland. And here he is a year later, back in a Beaver uniform. He goes two innings, one hit, one unearned run, a walk, no strikeouts, gives way to Royce Ring. Players really enjoy playing here. They enjoy the mild summers. The pitch from Ring, and it's taken for a strike by Kurt Suzuki, 0-1. Ring last year with the Mets, 11 appearances, 2.13 ERA. Royce delivers, and it's swung out, and a fly ball down the right field line. Out goes Myro, out goes Cruz, and it's back into the Widmer Pub. And it's 0-2 to Kurt Suzuki. Remember tomorrow, our Toyota pregame show begins at 3.40 Pacific time. Ring was acquired by the Padres in the Ben Johnson trade last year. Pitch waved at and missed by Suzuki, and down he goes. And the left fielder, Brian Stavisky, comes up. Keith Bell came over in that trade as well. Bell is now in the Padres bullpen. Ben Johnson and John Adkins went to the Mets. That was in November. Portland Beavers baseball is brought to you in part by Comcast. It's Comcastic. Call 1-800-COMCAST today. Fastball outside to Stavisky, ball one. And Beavers baseball brought to you in part by HealthNet. HealthNet helps people be healthy, secure, and comfortable. It's pulled foul by Stavisky, one and one. HealthNet, a better decision. One on, one out. We're in the top of the eighth inning. The Beavers lead 15 to three. The River Cats got a run in the first. The Beavers came back with three in the second. Sacramento scored one in the third. Portland had six in the second. They had six hits in the inning. And that included four for extra bases. They had three doubles as part of a three runs fourth. A one one from Ring. Breaking ball outside. Two and one. Ring is making his eighth appearance. No record, 1.86 ERA. Fastball down and away. Three and one to Stavisky. He has grounded out three times tonight. Ring delivers on 3-1. There's a chopper toward the right side. Charged by Cruz. He tags the runner going by. Throws to first for a double play. Nice play by Luis Cruz. A 4-3 DP. Tagging Barton going by. We go to the bottom half of the eighth. 15-3 Portland. Tonight on Techno Quiz, we put the Todd family's tech knowledge to the test. Todd's ready? Ready. Name four reasons Comcast Cream Satellite TV. Oh, state-of-the-art fiber optic technology. Local and cable high-definition channels. On demand. Shows you play any time. And no long-term contracts to sign. Spectacular, Todd's. Now, why is Comcast America's number one high-speed internet service? Downloads up to seven times faster than DSL. Free Rhapsody Radio and Video Mail. Free McAfee Security Downloads. And free online gaming. 
Morning. That's true Commander Broadband. Last question. What makes Comcast Digital Voice the best home phone service? One low price for everything. Like unlimited nationwide long distance. Anonymous call blocking. And checking your voicemail online. The Todd's win. And you can too. Call 1-800-COMCAST to get one tech-tastic connection to your home. Certain restrictions apply. Some services not available in all areas. Call Comcast for details. If you drive one of today's newer vehicles, take a close look at Turibo LS from Les Schwab Tires. The innovative tread helps it mold to the road for better traction. It's designed to be one of the most advanced tires we've ever sold. And its patented silent wall makes it one of the quietest. Safety, comfort, performance, and our money-back ride guarantee. Turibo LS from Les Schwab. Made specially for you, exclusively from us. problems can leave you stranded in the middle of nowhere. Next time, call Northwest Computer Service and Repair. They feature on-site PC service and repair throughout Oregon and Washington. So don't panic. Just call Northwest Computer Service and Repair. Find them online at nwcomputerandrepair.com. Bottom of the eighth inning, Beavers lead 15-3. to The first pitch taken down in the way by Craig Stansberry, ball one. Craig's two for five tonight, couple of singles, and a couple of runs batted in. Pitch outside, 2-0. and oh. Of all the run-scoring hits by the Beavers tonight, his single in the second may have been the most important. It drove home the first two, gave the Beavers a 2-1 to one lead, a lead they would not relinquish. He whacks one up the middle, past Castillo, a base hit. To his left to collect it is Charles Thomas, and Stansberry has his third hit of the night. on the homestand, Stansberry's had three hits in one game. Oscar Robles comes up. He has two hits, including a triple tonight. David Castillo delivers high ball one. Castillo, the backup catcher, out to work the seventh and the eighth in a mop-up roll. He got three outs in the seventh. A ground out, a line out, and a pop out. He deals one high and away, 2-0. and oh. So a position player pitching. A couple of days ago, Josh Howard pitched for the Beavers. A strike to Robles. It's two and one. Stansberry at first with nobody out here in the eighth. Pitch popped up off third. Foul, and that'll be back and out of play. Two and two to Oscar Robles. Portland Beavers baseball is brought to you in part by Portland General Electric. Delivering safe, reliable power to your home and business. Whoever got that ball, they're booing him to give the ball to the kid. The 2-2 two -two pitch swung on and chopped foul. Still 2-2 two two to Robles with Josh Howard on deck. Beavers baseball brought to you by Miller Light. Good call by Fred Meyer. What's on your list today? You'll find it at Fred Meyer. By HealthNet, a better decision. Robles pulls one foul down the right field line all the way up onto the roof. Still 2-2. Two and two. Beavers baseball brought to you by Comcast. It's Comcastic. And by the all new full size 2007 Toyota Tundra. Castillo's pitch taken high by Robles. Looked like he tried to throw a change there. And it's three and two. The three two pitch pulled on the ground toward first. It's a fair ball heading down the right field line. Robles around first. He'll dig for second. Around third base is Stansberry being waved to the plate. Here he comes. Robles coming to third. The relay to third, and it is a backdoor slide. Not in time. Robles' second triple of the night. Sixteen to three, Beavers. Stansberry scores all the way from first. He laces one inside the bag at first base. The Beavers tonight have tied the club record for doubles in a game. They've tied the club record for triples in a game. 
Josh Howard takes one on the outside corner on one. Howard is looking for his first hit of the year. He is 0 for 9 and has struck out six times. He swings and fouls it off to the left 0 and 2. Reserve outfielder doesn't get much of a chance to play. He pinch hit in the sixth inning and struck out swinging against Sean Cohn. Now facing the backup catcher, David Castillo. Castillo's pitch taken high. And it's one and two. Second triple of the game for Oscar Robles. He's three for four with a walk. The one-two pitch. Breaking ball pulled on the ground toward the right side. And Robles comes to the plate as Melillo throws out Howard. That's the first out of the inning. Beavers have now scored more runs in this game than they did in any game last year. One out, nobody on. 17 to 3, Portland. Josh Howard picks up a run batted in. That's his first of the year. Jack Cust comes up. He's homered twice. The pitch to Cust. He takes low ball one. Early August of last year, Cust hit three home runs in one game in Omaha. He has two tonight. He swings and comes up empty. It's one and one. Jack backs back out of the batter's box. Twists around as if to stretch out his lower body, his uh, lower back. Now digs back in. Castillo, the right-hander, he fires and Cust swings and chops it foul. It's one and two. Two runs home here in the eighth inning for the Beavers. They've scored in every run, but the in, every inning, but the first and the seventh. They lead 17 to three. Cust back in. Swinging for the fences, I'm sure. The one-two pitch. He swings and beats it foul. It's still one and two. Castillo with a new baseball to work with. For Cust, it's got to be like facing a batting practice pitcher named David Castillo. Cust at three home runs August 4th in Omaha. Four days later, he had two in Des Moines. The one-two kid, breaking ball, strike three called. He strikes him out with a curve. Down goes Cust. Moral victory for David Castillo. The Rivercats backup catcher. He strikes out Cust. Royce Huffman comes up. Cust tonight goes two for five with two home runs, three runs batted in, a walk, and three strikeouts. Royce Huffman tonight, he's two for four with a walk, couple of runs scored. Royce swings and bloops one back a second. Out goes Melillo, reaches up to backhander. The inning is over. The Beavers add two runs. We go to the ninth, 17 to three, Portland. You're tuned to the home of Portland Beavers baseball. Sunny 1550, KKAD, Vancouver, Portland. You know who you are. You're the guy who'd rather take the stairs to your office than wait for the elevator. You're the gal who chooses fruit juice over soft drinks. You're the dad who'd rather teach his kid how to catch than give him a new video game. You're the kind of person who believes in taking control of your health. And HealthNet of Oregon is here to help you. At HealthNet of Oregon, we've designed a healthcare system to provide you the information, services, and processes you need to make better informed decisions about your health. Because we believe that informed members are healthier members. Maybe that's why more than 5.5 million Americans have made HealthNet a part of their lives. And why more than 22,000 doctors in Oregon and Washington have joined the HealthNet network. Take control of your health. Ask your employer about HealthNet of Oregon. Or for more information, call 1-888-802-7001. That's 1-888-802-7001. HealthNet of Oregon. A better decision. Breaking news from our special agent, Aaron Insurance. Overpriced auto insurance is trying to drain the nation's spending power. Can it be stopped? Luckily, overpriced auto insurance is no match for insurance online auto insurance. That's because insurance can save you hundreds. And why insurance is one of the fastest growing auto insurance companies in America. Stop overpriced auto insurance from draining your spending power. Join the fight to save yourself hundreds on auto insurance. Get your quote from insurance.com today. Not available in all states. Leo 
Carlos comes out of the Beavers bullpen for the top of the ninth inning. The Beavers lead it 17 to 3. The last time the Beavers had 19 hits in a game was when they had 22 hits. That was back on September 2nd of 2004. Several times they had had 18 hits in a game. Leo Rosales into his wine. He delivers. He's the Beavers' closer. He worked the ninth inning yesterday. Back the 10th inning, and he gave up the solo home run to Antonio Perez. It was the difference. Facing Donnie Murphy, and the pitch taken outside. Two balls and no strikes. Royce Ring, one inning, a walk and nothing else. Jack Castle, the pitcher of record. He'll get his first win. 17-3 Portland, and the pitch. Fastball pulled on the ground through the hole. Left field base hit. Antonio Perez comes up. Rosales' nemesis from yesterday. Number eight, right fielder, Antonio Perez. 17 to 3, Portland. Rosales' delivery, fastball outside. One ball and no strikes. The 1-0 pitch, fastball again outside, 2-0. Leo straightens up, and his 2-0 pitch, fastball for a strike on the outside corner. It's 2-1 to Perez. Charles Thomas on deck. Tomorrow, Toyota pregame show at 3.40 p.m. Pacific time. We'll look at first Rosales' pitch. Curveball outside, three and one. His best pitch is the changeup. The three-one pitch, and it swung out and missed by Perez. He was looking to take Rosales deep for the second straight game. Rosales dangles his right arm down. Now he comes set, looks over his shoulder, and the 3 2 pitch. Long on and missed. Down goes Perez. Gather down to their last two outs. Charles Thomas comes up. Three times in the franchise's seven year history, they've scored 16 runs in a game. July 24th of 2002 in Calgary, July 26, 2004 in Salt Lake City, August 19th of last year at Las Vegas. Tonight, they have a franchise record for runs scored, 17. Pop up, back a third, down the line. Now it goes the third baseman Stansberry. Makes a nice catch above his head. Thomas fouls out. And mercifully, the Rivercats are down to their last outs. Kevin Malillo comes up. He's one for four tonight. 17-3, Beavers. Interesting that Rick Renneria would use Leo Rosales here. That means if he uses him tomorrow, it'll be the third straight day, and he wouldn't be able to use him the next two days. And the strike to Melilla, 0 and 1. The Padres organizational rules, if a relief pitcher works three consecutive days, he has to sit the following two. I think it's a pretty good rule. Changeup, waved at and missed, 0 and 2 to Melillo. 3,036 here at PGE Park tonight. The Beavers have a 6 a.m. flight tomorrow to Denver. Then they'll bust from Denver down to Colorado Springs. The 0-2 pitch, it's taken inside 1 and 2. The players have a 2.30 a.m. wake-up call. And that is four hours and 20 minutes away. Rosales set, and the 1-2 pitch. Change up, pulled on the ground toward the right side. Picked up by Myro. He waves off Rosales. The game is over as Myro touches first. Final score, 17-3, Portland. Now for my in-studio coordinator, Mike Sacker. This is Rich Burke inviting you to stay tuned for our post-game show coming right up. Hi, I'm Melissa Volvada. 
and my husband Rod and I are Oregon dairy farmers. I really love living in the country, having lots of room for our family to grow and, and my son to play and my son to be able to work with his father. I think we've tried to teach him just on a daily basis. It really matters what we feed our cows to maintain their health how we take care of them. We do everything that we can for herd health because we really believe in what we do. And that's important to our son Garrett as well. He's six, but he already understands. I'm gonna be a dairy farmer when I grow up, like my dad is. Get a grand slam of health with three a day of dairy every day. Milk, cheese, and yogurt are a simple way for your family's team to build stronger bones and healthier bodies. Healthy cows, healthy farms, healthy products. That's what we're all about. This message was brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Oregon.